<laughs> I'll name names and everything like that later on. Yeah. Bottom, but yeah. it was yeah. it was one of these things. I was at a table and this guy had said this, and I look around and nobody he was not joking, and everybody was like, oh, and I'm like, this is the most amazing thing anybody's ever said. It yes. is horrible, but is amazing, That's and it's lost good. on the entirety here. Oh my god. You guys gossiping. We're we're just Are you little, gossiping? We're just, we're just a little yeah. A little sewing circle over here. You make me a beanie? Sure. Right. Hmm. That's commerce, everybody. Yep. Buy for one, yeah. sell for Bryce's beanie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, do we have an echo? Why that magic? Are we having an echo? Or are you? What's up with that? Is it just these hot tunes that are echoing? It could be our hot tunes. Is it the fact that we all are sharing the same sentiments over and over again? Are we... Mm. Is it just that side character from Hawkeye? Is this a reference to Lock and Key, the Netflix original based on the graphic novel of the same name? Not sure. Not sure. Well, uh, well let's at least pull everybody up here first and we'll go. Yeah, Hello, everybody. everybody. It's Monday. Echoing. Everything is like, okay. Do you have maybe two copies of the thing? Oh, he's here is no echo. That might be a Wabbit Magic problem. Wabbit Magic, is that you? Wabbit you have magic. Two are, are, you, are you are you playing? Do you playing wow. twice? Wow! Wow! It was him. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable! Wow. Hello, everybody. Wow. It's Monday. Classic. Whoa! Whoa! Classic wabbit magic. <laughs> um. Uh, hello, it's Monday, January seventeenth, twenty twenty-two. What gets where, 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 where are you on on tolerance of uh, uh, making a big deal about uh, where we are in history? What, uh, Relative to you personally. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Brian Brushwood's birthday. Hey, so let's oh, yeah. Wish, let's, wish, let's wish the old boy a uh, happy Man, birthday. It's, happy, it's, happy it's birthday. a little bit, uh, it, it's, it's, you. it's a different one for two reasons. One, uh, 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 it's non Euclidean. This is usually You're turning T10. This is usually when I when I love to to brag about all the other celebrity birthdays that happen to be this exact day. Uh -huh. But of course, hmm, uh, uh, the uh, one of the best ones. It's 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 a different year. So happy birthday to Michelle Obama and Amtrekker. And, oh, and, oh, that, and gosh damn it. Yeah, uh, else? And David Prager and Travis Lopes. Travis Lowe. I've heard that there are secrets to living 100. Ugh. I that was in that was in the grocery store. I know. Check out, oh, the the magazine had come out. The early secrets. Her secrets uh, to living to 100. Wow. Uh, uh, Jake Paul. That's right. It's Jake Paul. Jake Paul turned 100. And it's one of those weird things, like, because there are a lot of them out there, like celebrating and. All of that stuff, but that one is very specifically like. Are we like not mentioning her name like Voldemort for a reason? Or <laughs> oh like, no, but Betty. Can we say Betty White? We can say Betty White. I can say Betty. All right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't oh, like. Is that Franklin? I'm looking for like for sure. She, she freaking walks out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's up, fuckers? James Earl Jones. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm so glad you cursed. It was better that way. Uh, <laughs> not even a good Betty White impression. <laughs> All right. Um, Kid Rock. Kid oh, Rock. Damn. James Earl Jones. Yeah, James Earl Jones. Kid Rock. There's Joey a. Anna Shell. There, there's, there's a, there's a scene in Ray J. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, there's a scene in 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 Detroiters where they go to the annual uh, ad awards. And uh, they have their ad, which is weird, like bizarre and weird. And then all the other four ads are black and white uh, of this city of Detroit. Like we do things tough, all narrated by Kid Rock. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and they're just another one with Kid Rock. Another Kid Rock. Wow. <laughs> one of them is uh, Detroit. Uh, what's his name? Tim Allen. Uh, no, Wait, although no, that's that, not that, Detroit. That, that episode, yeah, it is Detroit. And, uh, that episode has, uh, uh, Tim Karn from, uh, uh, 
Home Improvement. Richard Carn? Or Richard Carn? Sorry, Richard Carn. Tim Carn. Richard Carn. Hybrid. I would love to see. Is uh, uh, he hosts the awards, and it's uh. a, it's an amazing, bizarre uh, performance which by shows Richard Carn. Detroiters. Uh, okay. Which is uh, Tim Robinson from I Think You Should Leave's previous show that he did with Sam. Ah, Richardson. okay. Now you now, owe it to yourself to watch it if you like. I think you should leave. It's amazing. I don't know. And it's on I Paramount, like his old right? Stuff. It's on Paramount. Cash grab. Cash grab. Yes, I was at Arby's grab. in North Hollywood, and Tim, and Tim Allen walked in. Whoa! Arby's. What did he order? Did you see what his order was? Big Montana. I didn't get close. Meat I mean, Mountain. He didn't look approachable. So did it look I, like he got a mountain of meat? I don't know, but it was a very you know, tool time appropriate you know. Arby's. <laughs> 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 Hey, so I was looking through old uh, notes from other shows yeah. we did. Yeah. And remember we I, we had that thing, I think it was the, the Google satellite of like the bomber, and I went to go click on it, and it's no longer on Google satellite. Damn. Oh, oh wow. really? Yeah, the stealth bomber, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, from, from over that wow. farm. Wow. Wow. Because uh, I'm like, because I, I had the caption above it said hellhole. I'm like, well, what's this? And I'm looking at it. I'm like, I don't see no hell. I'm like, I don't see nothing. And then I'm like, oh. Mm. All right, I men think. in black cleaned it up. We are ready to start the show. Uh, you ready, Andrew? I'm ready. All right, I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, ahoy! Justin Robert Young. What's up, nerds? <laughs> Mr. Bryce Castillo. Uh, thank you for having me on your podcast. <laughs> so uh, I just shared this with everybody right before. I went to go click on some notes from previous shows. And in a previous episode, we mentioned a Google image that captured an aerial image of a one of the stealth bombers. But I didn't realize this. I saw this URL, and I just clicked on it to open up a map. But I'm like, why am I looking at a farm? There's nothing there. Well, the stealth bomber got extra stealthy because it ain't there no more. Uh, Matt, it's it's really made me uncomfortable. We've we've talked a little bit about this um, uh, in the uh, Homo Deus book uh, from Harari. Uh, he talks about uh, the the almost religious belief that everything could be saved with data. But now I'm increasingly paranoid that um, uh, as I see podcasts change, where they used to have two hosts and now they just have one host and and uh, uh, satellite footage and all that stuff. It's like I'm, I'm increasingly uh, irrationally paranoid about trusting what I see on the internet at all. Well, I, I think part of, you know, especially our generation, a generation that lived without the, the kind of fully formed World Wide Web and then grew to have it become a, a more, more and more important part of their lives, the, the thing that we, I think, very much above anything else were, became fascinated with the internet uh, uh, for was the fact that it could save everything. Like if you think of the things that really, really moved the needle, including like Gmail, Gmail's idea was like, never delete an email because kids, we used to have to do that on Hotmail. It used to say, sorry, your inbox you is your full. maximum amount of correspondence memory. Delete these things. Uh, and with that, I think we are also now even more horrified by the idea of like, oh, wait, Things I thought were saved forever now can change, and it's like I think we all know that it's possible, but uh, uh, doesn't doesn't make it not spooky. That there's there are some things it makes me wish much harder that I had documented in the moment because they don't seem terribly remarkable when you see them. Uh, uh, I did a, a, a country music tour with. Big name acts, and I won't say which of the big name acts it was. Betty White. But they uh, uh, had a video screen, and <laughs> there was, you know, I, I watched the show 25 times. Yeah. And uh, on the video screen, in the middle of a mix, there was one moment where, and I know it was, I am certain it was a lark. I am certain it is not sinister. I also am certain it did not work. But... So they had inserted one frame of buy a blank blank T-shirt, uh, and uh, 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 it, oh. and I'm like, that's that straight up uh, subliminal advertising. Uh, it, like they're trying that, and I'm like, 
that's wild. And then I would tell everyone else on, on the bus, and they were like, no, that's not true. That's not true. And I, one at a time, brought them all over. I was like, here, watch, watch. And, uh, uh, and I'm like, three, two, one, and what? And they were like, oh, my God. It, it, one of those things, like, once you knew to, to look, you saw it. it. You saw yeah. it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, look, I'm on the tour. I don't want to mess anything up. It never occurred to me to document it. But now... There's nobody who has any reason to believe my story at all. Including me, Fibber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How dare you defile the good name but, of Betty White? Now, now <laughs> I, I really wish that I had bothered to capture a video and hold on to it. I, there's a similar thing. Like when I was in high school, I was following these bands overseas and they had like scandals and stuff and members left the, the group for... What were like, no, like, obviously, like, she has a boyfriend, so they kicked her out of the group. But a lot of that, a lot of the details have been washed away from the internet. And so it's just, there was a report of something, but she, they ended up, like, a lot of stuff has got, a lot of the edges have softened over time because that was in a semi uh, ephemeral state. A lot of those news articles are not uh, around anymore. And, like, so it's, it's, I'm not crazy. That really yeah, happened. And, she and, had and an affair. I, I think I think that there's some stuff with that that is like um, a little bit, almost even more worrisome in our in our modern era. Like there, uh, uh, the Washington Post got in trouble for uh, altering some of their stories, uh, specifically about the Steele dossier, which was the basis of a lot of the Russia uh, uh, investigation and and hubbub during the Trump presidency. And they had written a lot of, I believe they won a Pulitzer because of it. Uh, and they went and changed some of their articles without having a note on it. Normally you have a note on it. Right. Uh, and a previous version said. And because yeah. they recently pulled out of uh, LexisNexis, which is, a, you know, even if the, it, 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 the, it, the tool. Yeah, it is like the tool to find old archive stuff that you can only now get those old versions of the article if you are on this other proprietary, it's like a Dow Jones thing that has less uh, 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 subscribers than, than LexisNexis has, but it's like, and then they really got raked over the coals for it, at least inside journalism. But like, there's a there's a lot more of of, of kind of stuff like that. You know, and the the crazy thing is, I trust somebody better, more who says, "Hey, I was wrong on this thing before, and now I see this, and this is where I am on now." Somebody who updates their thinking. And I would rather somebody who maybe does some every kind of does some maybe wild takes every now and then, but is capable of updating that. Yeah. Than somebody who just tries to pr promote the oh no we're right well we didn't have to talk it's a really technical restore what and it's like nah you're you're insincere I don't trust you. Well, but, that's kind of like the Bloomberg thing, right? With like I see this happen on this mentioned on the the daring fireball all the time because John Gruber makes it a big point, but like mm -hmm. the the big hack story from a few years ago, yep. which uh, uh, was a blockbuster story and then kind of didn't have any evidence to back it up just but, give everybody a little bit of background on that because that is yeah the, it, it's funny well, the so, rumors so bloomberg that, put out but. this article from 2018 the big hack and it was the idea that china had hidden these very very tiny um spying chips on all sorts of silicon that had been produced in the country and that because of these very tiny almost microscopic chips that China had a backdoor into yeah, they, all sorts they of servers. Apple, everything. Yeah, yeah, it was bombshell, bombshell. Yeah, that, huge, that, that this that this was because China, like, can control anything within China. Uh, uh, that a lot of even these major factories that American companies have very very close relationships, uh, even they subcontract out to certain other companies, and and it was with those overflow places that China had been like, no, we're hijacking this and making you put a tiny chip on it, which is a, a, a international scandal. And it, that's entirely plausible. Enti plausible. It, it, read, it read realistic to me when I first read it, for sure. Uh, but then it seemed like there was never substantial evidence to kind of back that up, and there was never any follow-up reporting saying the, this hasn't panned out yet. And so I, I, I think about it a lot because... Every time John Gruber posts a Bloomberg article, which he still sources, uh, he still points out and says, hey, Bloomberg didn't had this huge 
thing, this huge journalistic kind of black mark. Name and- one story that doesn't have conclusive evidence c- involving the Chinese government. Name one <laughs> other story <laughs> that, 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 that could else. benefit from further illumination by the Chinese government. Yes. One more. And the, the issue in the Bloomberg was that like they made statements about Apple and other stuff and then on scrutiny for backing this up or you know, can anybody nobody else could back and nobody else could come forward on that. Yeah. Um, well, uh, and, uh, versus another certain story on China, which everybody wants to ignore. I, you know, it's um, really like, put a pin in that one. Uh, um, I know. <laughs> The, the decline of box office revenue from American movies. That's the real scandal. Uh, I, I, I want to, I want to suggest too, like I, like one of the things that like, you know, my girlfriend, fiance studies film and stuff. And I say the thing you got to be careful of whenever you watch somebody or read somebody's bio story, you know, the, their origin story. Yeah. It's always a fabrication. Maybe it's using things, but it's always, it's always structured into a narrative that's more compelling for us to, to like, and we were watching, you know, Quentin Tarantino talk, and he goes, ah, you know, my first film, pulled, you know, my first film, Reservoir Dogs. I'm like, that's not his first film. It's, it's yeah. not, and and it is the way he phrased it. You know, the first film, he said the first produced film. So everybody thinks Reservoir Dogs is the first film. Everybody has in their head that Reservoir Dogs is his first film because that's what he wants, and he's brilliant, and he's a genius, and all that. And then they'll go like, well, yeah, he did a short film before. No, he did a feature length film prior to that called My Best Friend's Birthday, which. At the t- when he was younger and talked about it, like, yeah, it was horrible, but I learned so much about film, watching everything I did wrong, and then he made Reservoir Dogs. And it's a great story, but he doesn't want that movie up there with the rest of his movies, but to the point that if nobody, it's memory hold. Like, we just, people are yeah. gaslit, like, oh, yeah, he just popped up first thing he ever made, was Reservoir Dogs. He never had to learn. Well, and the the moral question uh, is is confusing and tickles my brain in a weird way. Uh, for example, uh, at the end of um, uh, 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 John Ronson's book, uh, uh, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, uh, he talks about, people try to rehabilitate their online persona. People who are known for their one note, nasty, nasty moment or whatever, where it's like, if you know, you try to go on a date, somebody Googles your name. And uh, um, uh, in this case, it was the story of, um, uh, man, I've already forgotten it, but uh, there, there was somebody who took a dumb photo of appearing to scream and be disrespectful at a, uh, a military graveyard that said, please show respect, right? I mean, that yeah. was the whole point of the joke was was to be it was a dumb thing. But instead, everyone's like, you know, well, this veteran and it became a pile on and a terrible moment for her. And uh, there are these companies that that you hire to rehabilitate your online image and to uh, 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 oh, build like emergency crisis. Uh, yeah, yeah. PR. So, so b- basically uh, what they do is they they coax the Google algorithm into uh, making enough other stuff with your name interesting that 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 it drifts away uh and in that case it's kind of a heartwarming tale because you know uh, normally their service costs you know hundreds of thousands of dollars like two hundred thousand dollars because they they hire somebody to write a blog for you and and to do multiple websites Mm -hmm. uh uh, and and, uh, link to relevant articles so that when you type your name in google it goes to the right place instead of the thing where the whole world is angry and shouting at you. Uh, and that fe- felt good. However, there's a, a, a I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, The Secret. Uh, there was somebody who was on The Secret who had uh, an attract money seminar where you would pay thousands of dollars to come and ride around in his uh, Rolls Royce collection uh, and talk about all the money you want to have. Yeah. And then you would attract money that way magically. And, um, uh, the, uh, 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 it was really appalling because like the Google auto completes would immediately say this person and, uh, uh, is a scam or is, you know, yeah. whatever, uh, the reviews, all the Amazon reviews for the books are like this, this, this book is, you know, the, these trash, blah, blah, right, blah, right, right. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and I was like, uh, uh, uh wild. Uh, and then years later, now when you search this person's name and you search on those books and you look at the reviews on Amazon, it's nothing but but three and a half, four star reviews. And there's uh, uh, the S word has been completely detached from uh, uh, from his name, and he's 
still collecting money to tell people how to make money, think about having money. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, it kind of overlaps a little with um, the EU sort of right to be uh, forgotten. Be, be thing. forgotten. Yeah. Right. Which is often used by people who maybe you would like to know had, you know, was a scammer and stuff. And that's the problem with it. I, I, I have a fun, personally have a fundamental issue with the right to forgotten because it's telling other people, no, you can't remember this. Um, you are you familiar with the uh, interplanetary file system? No, no. So this is a really cool. When we hear about Web three stuff and blockchain and all this sort of stuff, is we kind of it often we just think about cryptocurrencies when there's so much more stuff going on in there, which is like drives me up the wall because it's like one thing sucks all the you know the attention out of the room when there's amazing really cool stuff that's going on out there that just doesn't get because oh, i feel oh the price of this it's like okay let's talk about the really cool technology layer interplanetary file system is let's say i have i create a photo i have a photo okay i can compress it and create a hash that's not really it's a hash there's a unique id a fingerprint that data from that photo if i change one pixel and i try to create that hash again that hash will be different you can't create the same hat well you could but like Trillions and trillions and trillions of t chances. Uh, there's like, you, you know, you really, you could take a billion photos, change one pixel in each one, take billion of the same photos, change a pixel, random pixel in each one of them and create hashes from them. And they're all going to be different hashes. You, you follow? Yeah. It's yeah. a way to pick. Okay. So what that means is if I create a document and I create a hash, and this is basic cryptography. If I create a document, create a hash from it. If I compare that document in, you know, the hash to it, to the original hash to the number or the sequence, I can tell if it's faked or if it's the original one. You follow? Okay. Right. So, 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 so in other words, uh, uh, the benefits of NFTs or the blockchain, but, but, but with uh, uh, more traditional cryptography. Right. So what you can do is you can create a, instead of having a file system where everything's sort of like it's on this server, it's in this folder, you just create an item that has a hash that has this hash, right? And anybody could store that item. It doesn't matter where you get it. You'll notice that item because you get that photo, that document, whatever, and you could use the converter to say, no, this hash is different. This isn't what I asked for. So you can tell. So the idea of the IPFS is it's this cloud that you can store stuff that uses this. There's, you know, Filecoin. There's different things to way to pay for it. But basically, if you go to web3.storage, they're offering a thing where you can store two terabytes for free, um, not a plug, but... What you do is your data gets converted, each item into a hash. You have your data, and there's a hash that represents the location, rather. Where you know the, if, So if I go to any cloud server and I say, give me this hash, it will give me that data. And I know it's that document because I can look at that document's actual converted into a hash to get it, if you follow. So the beauty of this is that you can – things that – Things that get in demand, if I go to a server and I ask for this image and I keep asking for it, it starts to coast it and it starts to spread and kind of think of like kind of like torrents work to an extent yeah. and all that. But you have the idea of this this hash or the idea, you know, it's the version, you know, that that's the original one. So if you if Washington Post had to publish an article and went back and changed that article, you would know because like, oh, this is a different hash. Yeah. I, I think that there's, I mean, uh, obviously I think that there's probably a longer conversation we can have about web three. That is, that is uh, fascinating because I, I think that, that there is, uh, I am, I am, I am bullish on the idea that we are going to see more and more of it, but uh, I, I do like the concept of like, well, how permanent do we want things? Like how, uh, how much uh, uh, do we care about permanence on the internet? Because I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're coming to a point now, an inflection point where I think we, we kind of want maybe a little bit more of it, at least for some things. Like, cause I do, I, I do believe Andrew that, that, uh, you know, honesty and consistency is, is really important. <laughs> like it, it needs to be a near religious tenant in certain, uh, parts of our society up to and including the news. Then we could start. Yeah. From there, from, uh... You know, we've had a problem with research journals and uh, one, you know, finding these things later on, where did they, you know, vanishing information that again, bringing it back to the current situation, the crisis we're in, where things were supposed to be online and readily available weren't. Um, and when you move to systems or you move to the idea of saying, OK, if this is publicly available, it's in publicly available forever. That was sort of the beautiful thing about the Wayback Machine was the idea that, you know, starting off 
try to save as much stuff as you can. You think of what a helpful tool that is because, yeah, once something's gone, it could be gone. And, and we don't know what we don't know. It's a stupid phrase, but it's really true. And we don't, we, history is us trying to pick up pieces and fragments and stuff and using our own biases to reconstruct what we think really happened. But, you know, nothing beats data. And if we're losing that data, that's hard. You know, imagine, yeah, imagine like, I'm at, like the Steele dossier is a great example because I imagine trying to follow the narrative now of what happened and what was going on. And, you know, most people don't realize like that thing was completely debunked, unsubstantiated, et cetera. But this really, for over a year, with the media was taken by this. And we've moved right on by, which it should be scary because the next thing that comes along that may be true. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, uh, the, the, the implications of that idea was, were so electric, were so newsworthy, if true, that I think we've, we've kind of uh, moved past the idea that it wasn't. <laughs> which just kind of remembers the sugar rush of like, ooh, but maybe, uh, uh, despite the fact that it, it, it seems specious in the moment and, and it didn't get any more solid. And I, frust I think the frustrating part is we cared because of sensationalism and not because of the implication. The, the idea that, you know, how corrupt can politicians be? How, how, how much is foreign policy dictated by, you know, other influences and stuff? Yeah, and we kinda, and we, I, I, think, I think also the... the the reason why that took off and had a life of its own was because it, it fed many masters because it was also, look, that was the greatest upset in political and presidential election history from, from my perspective. Uh, and there were a lot of people that were like, well, why, why, how and why yeah. did this crazy thing happen? And so a crazy outcome might require a crazy explanation. Uh, well, uh, it yeah, and I, I think what's interesting, two things that kind of think I think of as like like we watched like the Hunter Biden story not get covered at all, right? To the point that, that is nobody even really acknowledges that was a story anymore, even though that turned out to be everything that was pretty much said seemed to have been true. What the implications are of that? Including those pictures, I, Hachi, Machi. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. You know, like I'm. It's not my place to say like what was really intent, what was the real intention there. I don't. I don't know. But I'd say it was that was fascinating because that was a story that got memory hold and then no longer in the discussion. And then I was thinking about this today because somebody I know who's really smart was asking on Twitter. I was like, like, hey, what are what are some is there any good book about the origins of the pandemic? And I'm like, well, of course, you know, Matt Ridley and Elena Chan's book and this. And then I'm like, well, this person's Twitter is different than my Twitter. Like they're not reading every day like, hey, we just found this redacted statement from these people trying to get a statement to, to promote the idea that it was natural, even though they thought that it was or you know, could be lab leak and all that. I'm like, holy cow, like that whole. The, the bunch of different role, re, everybody's reality is different, which you kind of know, but that's even people I interact with, I think, oh, they're on the same page. Like, no, they're not. Yeah, man. Like I know one way we could all get on the we same page. About. I know. Well, the one thing that we can all agree on is that your reality is defined by patreon.com slash weird things. Think not to the left, right, north or south of patreon.com slash weird things. It is the all-encompassing answer to your life. Patreon.com slash weird things. If you ever want to know where the true light of the divine shines upon you, you will know that it originates at patreon.com slash weird things where you can keep this show going by giving us money and get early access to the After Things podcast, patreon.com slash weird things. <laughs> There was, gentlemen, there, there was a credible AM radio ad. You yeah. are yeah, you. Like, you, <laughs> you can only uh, hope the know the power of patreoncom slash weird things by the time that you shuffle loose this mortal coil. You, every moment you're not there, you're sad. patreoncom slash weird things. Hey Brian. Yep. Hold up your hand. I want you to do this. Yeah. What, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? You hold up your hand. Yep, okay, yeah. You look, okay. Right. Yeah. Do you have a piece of paper? Uh, uh, I do. I, I do. Here. Yeah, uh, yes. I want you to take your hand. I want yep. you to take the piece of paper, and I want you to slice right through that piece of paper. Wait, with my hand? With your slice. Just slice right through it. Just okay. slice right through it. Okay. No, no, with your hand. Like, yeah, like that. Just like a chop. Slice. Okay. Chop it. I, I, I gotta get a chop paper. it and slice I'm gonna it. Get a, chop it and slice it, dog. Chop, chop, chop. Damn. You didn't do it. Uh, 
Oh, he start. Uh, oh, knocked off. Wow. Oh, cheater. Mm. Kind of feel like it's cheating. <laughs> well, I don't want to get a paper great. cut. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what happened for me, by the way, is the Skype cut out in the middle of that. So I see Brian hit it and it freezes and it cuts to him holding a piece <laughs> of the paper. And so <laughs> uh, that kind of sucked, Brian. Um, let me ask you a question. Um, Damn. When you would you slice pizza with your hand? Are your kids happy? Do they think you do a good job? Uh, no, no. Uh, when you slice it with your hand, so you make like a like a karate chop on a on uncut pizza, and you slice it with your hand. Well, I uh, I, I must admit, I very rarely cut things in half do you, with do your my kids hand. say hooray or cut pizza <laughs> well I, thank I god I, daddy I, I, had a I, I, had a I, had a I, hand I, that's swift well uh, uh i i don't think that would be very sanitary also or, i mean you'd wash or, your or, hand or, first you disgusting jamoke i yeah. also don't think it'd be very effective is what i'm trying to get oh. at. I, I, I think that's not a very good way well, to cut Slices of pizza. It's a little self-defeating. Who are you, Boba Fett? Uh, <laughs> I wah, will. Wah. I will cut this pizza with respect. With respect. <laughs> Sorry. Wah, wah, wah. Well, from a research paper called the paper title of the paper, "Survival to Amputa Amputation Pre-Antibiotic Area: A Case Study from a Long Aboard Necropolis." Which anytime you have a necropolis in this cool. Damn. Long story short, between the sixth and eighth century, they found a guy that had been buried. And uh, was missing his arm, but you know what? Where where his arm was? A knife. Knife blade. Knife Damn. blade. Evidence for the prosthetic. And he literally had a prosthetic knife. That's no. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, 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 my name is Doug Knife. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I you, cut off my hand when I was do fifty-one, you, do you so I could have know a knife. Why hand. they call me Doug Knife? <laughs> <laughs> is it because your knife hand, Doug? <laughs> oh, how'd you get it, Doug Knife? Pleased to meet you. Don't make me shake your knife hand again, Doug. So what? Uh, 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 was it strapped on? Was it bonded to the bone? Well, you or? can see it, they right? Found it, they found evidence in there of like what looked like in the shoulder, like lesions and stuff there. The the bone looked like it had been closed in because of this. And they found they in one one of his teeth, like it found like an abscess. Because their, their, the assumption is that he would be pulling on a strap to tighten it. Mm. Is what you do. And so there was a lot of forensic evidence. And the theory is, again... Science is making assumptions based upon a bunch of different pieces of information. Yeah. And the assumption here was dude had a knife hand. I mean, if, uh, I mean, think about it. It's like, uh, uh, nowadays. Oh, I do, Brian. Just, do. just 30 years ago, if you were missing a hand, you would get a, a, a literal hook. You would have a hook hand. Yeah. Uh, 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 but, uh, I mean, in this time and place, I would imagine if you were surrounded by enough uh, uh, skullduggerous rogues, you'd be all like, no, I don't want a hook. I want a, I literally Skull, want to be able to stab them. Skullduggerous rogue. How do we know this man wasn't a butcher? <laughs> well, I mean, like, like, there's a lot of there are ways that you can effectively use a knife hand that aren't holding example, maidens at knife point. For example, a butcher, <laughs> right? Uh, all right, and uh, and also you have a, a second one, a, a delicatessen <laughs> guy, <laughs> and uh, his hand uh, is a mandolin. A dream. short, a short bread salesman <laughs> who wants to give samples. <laughs> This is before the invention of sliced bread. Yes. This is back when bread slicers could what could be a full time. Oh, they come from position. yeah, from okay. miles around. Yeah, like other like, like damn, you I've been eating, I've been eating this shit by the loaf. <laughs> you gotta you gotta see the way this guy slices. He's a slicer and a dicer. So Brian, you feeling uh, a little inadequate there? Uh, Come on, man! You just had a birthday. I know that you're looking for a present. What do you say we we take a little uh, <laughs> take a little something off the left hand I mean, and what, throw it do the, well, well, throw, I mean, throw a little it, knife on there? I'm right-handed, and if I'm gonna have a, a a knife for a hand, I want that to be the more dexterous hand. You know, so you'd use it on the right, not the left. Well, I mean, wouldn't that be if you're, if you're actually gonna use it? I mean, what do you do? You use a knife left-handed? You're gonna give yourself the stranger for the rest of your life. Ooh. Well, I mean, Ooh. look, How long am, before I, it's no longer the stranger. Am I? Am I? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> am I committing to this bit or not? Is 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 the question? Is like, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna swap if I'm gonna swap a hand for a blade. Let me ask you it's a gonna question. Be the best hand so that the blade How can be the best blade. How much would you 
like to switch your job to be a butcher? <laughs> <laughs> not very much. What do you think about Boris? I advise head? you not do this. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say you should rethink this. You like, know what? Actually, I don't mind being a, a good <laughs> YouTuber and podcaster, yeah. but a very bad butcher who uses his hands yeah. to just kind of just tear off hanks of of meat. Yeah, <laughs> not meat slices. Hanks. You're just... no meat hanks. That's <laughs> that's the name of his butcher. <laughs> His I'm, butchery is called I'm, Meat Hanks. I'm the least popular of Tom's children. Exactly. Uh, old Meat Hanks. Yeah, you're, 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 you're Chet's younger brother. Yeah. Yes. So, pro con. <laughs> okay, Pros. You're oh. a butcher. Uh, con. You, High sodium. Yeah, hard <laughs> on Tinder dates to explain that one. Or to use Tinder. It's very difficult to Or to, to use Tinder. <laughs> yeah, it tends to be a two-handed situation. A very high screen protector budget <laughs> everywhere. Oh, oh yeah. Your really... bio just reads, I have a knife for a hand. <laughs> Into that? <laughs> so, so, I mean, so, there's, I'll there, bet there's you. Somebody you'd actually, for I, everybody. I feel like you'd, yeah. you'd, I think you'd do well. It's a certain clientele, but you'd <laughs> clean up. Mm-mm. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, I'd say the cons are that you have a knife for a hand instead of a hand. <laughs> we're we're having Any some you, uh, we're having some network issues oh, okay. at <laughs> the moment. Sorry, uh, uh, what? Uh, bring us back, Andrew. Gentlemen, um, uh, let me ask you a question. Um, oh, we we lost him before. <laughs> sorry, can you ask that question again? You, kind of, I'm I'm sorry. We're having. I don't know why our network I, is acting like this. I swear it's not a bit we're doing. No, not a bit. give me give me one second, Andrew. Okay. Yeah, we're having we're having some <laughs> network problems with Andrew. I don't know, where's it's, my power? I don't need the, my power. It's the, it is, you have to run. There's like a very long whetstone. Yes, where's my whetstone? <laughs> the whole, the whetstone's like a quarter mile My long. power <laughs> is returning! As you're dragging it. Right, and it's just getting sharper and sharper. I'm more powerful <laughs> than ever! Right, just sparks flying off. Yeah, I believe we're, can you hear us, Andrew? We, we've paused. Are you able to hear us? Yeah, there's like static or something in the background, but yeah, here uh, no, it's gone now. Oh, okay, good, All good. Right. All right, uh, well, well, we're not keeping that in. No, <laughs> I, damn. Thought, I thought that was, I thought the it was best pretty part. good. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. All right. Already, we are back. I'm sorry, Andrew, we cut you off. You were asking a question to the gentlemen here out there in Texas. Yes. So when you look outside there in the fields, let me ask you: uh, How many herd of conga do you have? Uh, sorry, heard a conga. Uh, 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 mm, heard a conga. No, you can't deny yourself any longer. You are looking at a herd of conga. I don't know what a conga is. I don't know if I should be lightly. I, it may be a very rude word I'm saying. Conga? A herd of conga? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mean to tell me. Here you are, Texans. You don't have any conga at all. No conga. I I can't I can't see a herd of conga. I mean, I, I maybe I'm new though. I, uh, nobody <laughs> likes me. <laughs> well, I mean, I I, I don't know. I don't know. You, I don't know a what a burger from uh, who's you, your mama. You 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 were born here in Texas. I was and allegedly I'm not allegedly. Uh, but you've lived here a lot longer than I have. Yeah. Would you call it living if you've never even seen a conga? <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Hold on, Andrew. 
I'm, I'm sensing that there's more to this story than we've been made aware of. <laughs> what the hell's a herd of conga? Well, a conga, well, it's a conga. Let's talk it's about a, a conga. You know what a conga was? Um, you ever, like, you know, like, there's the thing before the thing? You like know, an appetizer? The, <laughs> like, a, like a proto, you know, you, you had to have, like, we had sidekicks before we had iphones yes of <laughs> yes, course yes, yeah yes you know like ah, this is cool it's amazing I'm like no it's crap it's complete garbage ah, it's amazing so before we had horses domesticated horses somebody took a syrian ass yeah a wild donkey or apparently they just met they hooked up and they had a baby and people were like that baby is really cool that baby is like strong and you could ride it and it's useful yeah that was a conga wait and, and, and how, how many uh, 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 two questions number one uh do uh, are they extinct and uh uh how long ago were they were they bred <laughs> considering we're looking at a pile of bones <laughs> i love it that's what price pulls up as brian's asking the question is it extinct here's a picture here's a story about this where the lead art is a pile of bones <laughs> If anyone was unsure that this show is unscripted, I, 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 I don't, I don't <laughs> think like you know there's there, there's an only Kunga's uh, uh, Instagram <laughs> that is like inspiring <laughs> with Kunga's Walt every Whitman hour. poetry <laughs> over don't, don't, superimposed <laughs> over a smiling Kunga. Uh, 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 don't punish my inquisitive nature. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I think they're dead, much like the um, knife hand man. <laughs> And yet his legend lives on. <laughs> I don't know that because they're, you know, the breeds, I don't know that you couldn't have a conga right now. Because, like, literally, I think that you can you know, take a donkey and probably, you know, I, I don't know. We, we, we have all the... Just, breed it with dead ass. We, 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 all, we have all the ingredients for a conga. Uh, and and somebody could uh, like like well, like they discovered an old uh, a IPA ale recipe or something. Yeah, and we're like we're gonna remake it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I want. I would say, do we know what what the closest direct lineage is? Like, is there is there a? I mean, is, well, I'm like sure that the there's Syrian some... wild ass. Okay, that that that, that, that might that might just 1927. Oh damn! Wow, damn. So relatively recent. We have a DNA. You get it. A... Yeah, and you could because then it's like a donkey. You could have a conga. I mean, yeah. like, you, today you, you could make one, but because it would be a hybrid, it, it can't. It wouldn't be able to reproduce, correct? Just took a DNA test. Not found necessarily. I'm 100 oh, really? percent wild conga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, uh, not wild ass. Okay, uh, no. <laughs> um. Yeah, you can. Not not. You know, a number of hybrids can reproduce. Oh, um, okay. I I always I I just thought if you if it was a hybrid it was going to be sterile. Yeah. God, uh, but, God, but yeah, God comes were, down and says, yeah, you, hey, that's my job. The, oh, okay. These were one-offs uh, because basically they had to, like, they would take, like, hey, I'll take a, we'll take a wild ass stallion, New York Times for you, a wild <laughs> ass stallion and a donkey. Um, so basically what they did is that was, you had to eat, produce each one or you'd have to like get those two together, but that you can get hybrids that are reproducible. But anyhow, okay. um, kind of like what we are in a sense. Um, but they say this was the first animal to be bioengineered 4,500 years ago. Uh, wow. And a Kungs, a mix of female donkeys and male Syrian asses were powerful, expensive animals were bred 4,500 years ago in Mesopotamia. So they, we've found mentions of them. And we know like there was a lot more ass back in the, you know, olden times, Hell you know, donkeys yeah. and stuff. You would see horses for everything, you know, but. Every now and then you'll see a donkey in a movie or something. Like, oh yeah, donkeys are a thing. And we use those too. Like donkeys, donkeys are cool. They're beasts of burden, right? Moving things yeah. here, hither and yon. You know, maybe a turnip uh, thing so, behind it, bringing it to the market. <laughs> <laughs> you know what donkeys are up to? <laughs> These things. Well, you've, you've trained me to not, not say anything. <laughs> <laughs> like I did, I'll, I'll talk about my knife hand. 
Well, well yeah. What would you do with it though? Like, <laughs> I don't with it. Do but, with it now. <laughs> So here's 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 my favorite paragraph from this one. Syrian wild asses were captured and kept in captivity. The New York Times notes this is based on New York Times article. Even though they were difficult to conquer, Eva Marie Giegel, uh, Giegel, a specialist in ancient genomes at the University of Paris and one of the scientists who carried out the study, says that the director of a zoo in Austria, where the last captive Syrian wild asses died, described them as furious <laughs> they're like they're i will like, not God. stand like, for this God this damn sucks it. Damn it. <laughs> i am i am furious right now i am <laughs> the last syrian wild <laughs> ass <laughs> can, and i'm not gonna take it can i can i chop off a hoof i'm gonna get a knife, knife hoof or just or just file it down to a point. Yeah, drag it on a twenty thousand foot just, whetstone. Just take. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I would like to pay uh, twenty doubloons to have my hoof sculpted into a permanent middle finger. You think it was just like ah? I hate this. It sucks. <laughs> All my uh, everyone's dead. I hate ah. being a hybrid. Ah. Oh man, so much genetic fury. Ah. I'm looking at this. Uh, Looking at the black and white photo of the uh, Syrian wild ass. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a beautiful creature. It's, it's neat. It's a give me that ass shot. Uh, we would me... we, we would show it, but we, we would break the internet. Yeah, no, let's go. That let's break TOS. And show that black <laughs> oh my and white God. ass. I Damn, that's I... some skinny legs on that ass. <laughs> There's another one. Look at another one. Uh, the little galloping, little little. Yeah, it's yeah, trotting a little bit. It's tiny. Can you just move the curse, just uh, the scroll up, up and down as fast as you can? <laughs> to make Not shake like, that ass, yeah, pick. Yeah, Let right. me see what you got. Not shake that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know the James Webb Space Telescope is twenty three days into its twenty nine day journey to Lagrange Point Two. They found any ass yet? <laughs> space ass? Any space ass out there? <laughs> Is it furious? <laughs> furious space ass? That means in only a week. It was led by the Astro Man. <laughs> Looking for asteroids. <laughs> Find out about the Big Bang. Yeah. Sun. Sun? <laughs> Not participating. No. <laughs> oh, you're the one wow. It. You're the one above it. <laughs> it's been a while since we've gotten a too silly from Andrew. I don't do puns. I just don't no, do puns. No, he's out. <sighs> he's out on it. Uh, anyway. Uh, James Webb Space Telescope. What's up? Uh, it's it's, it's almost, out there. It's still almost, out there. It's almost there. It's, it's still unfurled. Doing some work. It's, it's making its way downtown. It's walking uh, fast. Yes, yes. It's a uh, asses pass. All right. <laughs> you guys want to? And he's like range bound. <laughs> Wait, let's do. What do we? Uh. All right. Uh, what are we? What? Let's look at like the James Webb like best thing things we're hoping it'll see. Let's yes. see. Let's look mm. James Webb. Mm -hmm. First space <laughs> yep. with with a nice that hand. damn B Carol basket. Alright, let's see the observer. What they plan to observe? They had one thousand one hundred seventy-two proposals they received for what they wanted to go look at. Um, oh, like they surveyed people. To find out yeah. what it is they wanted well, to find. Probably had scientists submit stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just no, open. I would love, I'm sorry, I would I love it if it's at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> surveyed 100 people at the mall. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, show me a star. <laughs> it's $20 billion and it belongs to you. Like, it does. Like, remember Bo like Bo Bodie McFace face or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> the Bodie McBode face. Yeah. Uh, uh uh, uh, sorry, I mean, I, 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 it sounds like you actually have real answers. I have a description of what uh, one of the people working on the project, uh, operations project, says about the first photo. You ready to hear him describe what the first images are going to be like? Yep. Yeah. The first images are going to be ugly. It is going to be blurry. Yeah. We'll have 18 of these little images all over the sky, he told reporters during a live stream press conference. Uh, and so, because they have to then, you know, adjust that. So it's not like they pop it up and like, oh, we found a new galaxy. It's more like, uh, it's, what am I looking at? And so they'll have to calibrate it. 
yeah. Um, uh, uh, you, you said it was 18 of the of, of, of these hexagons that uh, I'll get, get focused. Is that what it is? I presume that's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah I think. Uh, yeah, and and each one uh, is going to be like imagine having 18 eyes, and all of them are crossed, and it's like okay, keep your eyes. Keep your eyes covered, 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 and look at the heavens. <laughs> and it's like, it's going to be so much nonsense. Uh, I wonder, uh, it's probably, I don't know if it's easy to find or whatever, what the um, kind of centering uh, objects are that they're going to try to uh, align everything up to. Like if, 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 you know, like the Andromeda Galaxy or something. Yeah, so hey, NASA one... has... Oh, uh, NASA has a, a, a statement about what they're, they've chosen a number of projects that haven't said which ones are going to be. Um, one of the most widely anticipated areas of research by Webb is to study planets orbiting other stars. When such an exoplanet passes in front of its host star, starlight filters through the planet's atmosphere, which absorbs certain colors of light depending on the chemical composition. Webb will measure this absorption using its powerful infrared spectrographs to look for the chemical fingerprints of the atmosphere's gases. Astronomers will initially train their gazes onto gaseous Jupiter-sized worlds like WASP-39b and WASP-43b, and because they are easier targets to which apply this technique. The result will help guide observing strategies for smaller, mostly rocky, and more Earth-like super-Earths where atmospheric composition may give hints of a planet's potential habitability. Uh, Webb will also... Oh, well, sorry. Well, 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 one more, one more. Webb will also peer into the distant universe, examining galaxies whose light has been stretched into infrared wavelengths by the expansion of space. This infrared region is beyond what Hubble can detect. Galaxy clusters are particularly rich sources of targets, since the cluster's gravity can magnify light from more of the distant backgrounds. DDERS observations will target regions of the sky already examined by Hubble's program, such as the galaxy cluster MAC SJ0717.5 plus 3745, etc. Sorry. Uh, well, so uh, what, one thing that, that uh, was mentioned earlier in there is that they, I guess they have a number of possible targets to start with, uh, but what my, my silly brain translated that as is, you're telling me you sent this thing up and you don't even know what you're going to point it at? Uh, and, then, and then it suddenly struck me, yeah, because that's the point of having a telescope over there is that you could look at literally anything. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to decide. No, you... they have a list of things. They just not disclosing what they're going to do first. Cause they want to keep that a secret. Okay. So they, 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 they accepted, they got a thousand proposals. They selected from there a list. Cause like that's the purpose. Of the telescope is, you know, open research. And so they have the list, like these are our first priorities. We're not going to tell you which one gets up first. I, I, I would also imagine that there's a little bit of keeping your options open based on the fact uh, that, you know, yeah, this thing is a miracle of engineering with, what was it, 344 points of failure and so on. So it's like if it, if it you know, spins or whatever happens to be, you know, who knows what might have gone wrong between now and the first image. So, yes, that, like, a, like any good mentalist, uh, you don't reveal what's in the envelope until, until the appropriate time. Yeah, but it's NASA, like, I mean, this stuff they were going to look at was, like, planned, like, five years ago. Oh, it all had to be know? approved in triplicate and had it's a paralegal funny, sign allocation it. and stuff. And, and you know, there's going to be that, to your point, Brian, there's going to be that phase of where they have to figure out, like, the testing and see, yeah, oh, maybe we'll just aim it here to see what we see. And somebody's like, I got an idea. You know, they have that there, but, like, I mean, this is everything, like the budget and the cost. Because remember, like, there's the telescope and there's the operations on Earth. And so how everything gets budgeted is kind of allocated for project programs. Yeah, there's something, yeah, there's like a, there's like a thing. Uh, uh, well, uh, we will all find out together. Uh, Next but, week. But we can find out now what our picks are. Hey, Brian Brushwood. Yes. On your birthday, what's your birthday pick? You got uh, a birthday pick for us. Um, I, I, I guess, I guess my my pick is I I, I hopped on a, a supersonic jet and flew to uh, London for uh, oh. uh, about uh, uh, two episodes, and then flew back to America, um, where I I. Uh, uh, took a peek at the first two episodes of uh, Toast of Tinseltown. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, the new season of Toast, Toast of, of London, London. Uh, right. we're now exiled from England. 
uh, uh, and certainly not because Matthew Barry is a lot more busy in America than he is in England these days. Yeah. Now Stephen Toast has made his way to Hollywood. Uh, yes, correct. And uh, I, I, I think I may just wait until it's available in America to watch it because gotta be soon right uh i would i would assume they're, they're all out in england but uh i was really surprised at i was like what feels weird about this and uh, then i figured out that uh it's got covid written all over it and mm. and that's why everybody is remote from every you know I, imagine toast of london only everybody's on the phone or on a skype call yeah or uh, green screening at each other, and at any given time, there was never more than four people in the same room. Uh, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm really curious to see it eventually, but I don't think I'm gonna rush back to England to go see it. Some some shows have done it better than others. I think the Succession did a great job of of masking the fact that they shot with a lot of COVID restrictions uh hawkeye was really hit or miss on on some things you know uh, uh feeling a little bit weird or off because otherwise you would have packed more people into a scene uh but but it is i don't know uh i'm starting to think this covid thing stinks <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i'm, I'm starting to think it stinks like old trash i'm against it i'm i'm not for it i'm tired of this covid <laughs> pu Andrew, you got a pick? I'll go last. Okay. What about you, Justin? Hey, <laughs> Bryce, you got a pick? I got a pick, sure. I watched this over the weekend. Um, uh, <laughs> there's something strange about 2022. Uh, it's fine. What, <laughs> so uh, when I was in high school, watching concerts of like J-pop stuff was very difficult. You would have to like, someone would have to buy it and rip it and upload it and you'd have to download it and put yeah. it all together and it would be super illegal. Um, and now they're just, they just put them on like Amazon and stuff. So over the weekend, uh, I watched uh, this really cool concert called Polygon Wave on Amazon Prime Video. Um, let me see if I can maybe pull up a trailer here because they've not... been doing a lot of concert stuff because they they also did the 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 Kanye and Drake concert, mm. uh, uh, but but they do a lot of it live streamed and then you know just uh, uh, archived. Yeah, and so this is a a live concert with a very f interesting stage design. This was shot in 2021, so because of COVID restrictions, they couldn't have um like a ground they couldn't have a ground level for the audience. Uh... So they. They have this. They're in this very tall arena with like three or four mezzanines, and the entire floor is a video screen, and there's a huge video screen backdrop. Um, and they do all sorts of really interesting video and and lighting things. Um, and I and I, I just thought it's very interesting. I like the band. The band is called Perfume. If you look it up on Amazon, it's called Polygon Wave. Uh, the they do have a couple of MC segments that are subtitled. Uh, the music you will have to look up the lyrics yourself if you care. Um, What's the NC segment? Uh, like uh, th where they talk to the audience, they try to oh. get everybody hyped up, and they MC, uh, MC like uh, master of ceremony. NC. I'm oh, like, no. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. NC well, seventeen like, segment is cool. yeah, good. no <laughs> children, a couple no children segments. Uh, but there's something NC interesting. Like, oh. <laughs> there's an interesting thing about it because since they shot it in 2021, one of the restrictions Japan had was you can't like shout. You really kind of can't make I noise. Was, I was literally going to ask you that because uh, uh, that's a thing that's happening with most of the, the the Japanese export that I wind up paying attention to is pro wrestling, yeah. and they have no cheering crowds, you so all shout. they can do is clap. Like, right. That's that's it. Uh, <laughs> uh, other than that, it is. Uh, 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 you can't do anything. You yeah, can't. And, can't and not only is it a a legal restriction, although I think that has come and gone. But the fans have made the decision that they are not going to do it. It wow. is now like they're self policing okay. that they are only going to clap and not chant. The, yeah, see, and I can't. I can't even do do that because I have this knife for this a hand. knife for a hand. Yeah. You can do it once. <laughs> you just flick it. I, I goes, do the knee, the knee slapper. You know, yeah. When I when I went to go perform in Japan, I had one of the the, the booker that sent me there said, "Just so you know, that the, they this is how they they clap. They're not going to cheer or whatever." But I don't know if it was because it was a resort town or what, or my, maybe my charisma. I have no idea. But the end of the show, I would, I would. That was I had the whole the 
the the run where they would shout Enderu, Enderu, <laughs> which uh, no. I thought was me, but it turns like get the ape boy off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I found when I when we went to Tokyo to see wrestling, uh, they they were very very respectful of hierarchy. So they were no matter how good things were, like in America or uh, you know Europe. Uh, uh, if mm. if something is if the first match that you see is really really good, you could scream and yell the loudest you'll ever scream and yell at that match. Not so in Japan. In Japan, that they were they were reserve, reserve, reserve. But when we got to the end, it was among the loudest arenas that I that I'd ever uh, uh, been mm. inside of. Uh, and and so that kind of plays in a little bit with this with this concert film is. All of the it took me a few songs before I realized like why does this seem so different and it's because they only clap between songs yeah and so it seems almost like a like a theater production almost because there's not you know they, it's like dance music and so it's normally like a big dance yeah thing. Um, it just ends up being and it's it's interesting and so that's on that's on Amazon Prime Video it's called Polygon Wave if you look it up uh, it's kind of neat and uh, uh, the other interesting thing about it is if you wanted to see what the 2020 Tokyo Olympics opening ceremony would have been. You should look at these perfume concerts because they and the team that they work with were working on the original oh, wow. 2020 Olympics uh, opening ceremony. So, wait, so some of this stuff might have just been ripped from stuff they couldn't do during that, or uh, s certainly the tools that they used to yeah. make some of the stuff and some of the concepts, some of the because yeah. they're a very high tech group because they don't they don't sing, so they have to put a lot of effort into dancing and and uh, visual they don't designs. Sing? They don't sing because it's they. They they lip sync because it's very like dance and electronic. Wait wait, wait no, but have they sung the songs before? It, like there's a, they don't sing live. They don't sing live. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Not <laughs> yes, Millie. No, that's that's right. not Millie Vanilli. It may be, but it's not. No, yeah. We it is like they definitely don't sing live because there's so yes. much processing. But Which, they they do record vocals for. The in song. general, most most dance centric acts do not sing yeah. live. Uh, so that's that's my pick. Yeah, uh, Justin or Andrew? Uh, I'll go. Okay. There's a, uh, a network called Home Box Office, and <laughs> I oh, love it. Boy, do they got two shows that I like. But I'm just gonna shout out this one. Uh, uh, no, Bryce. It's not the Righteous Gemstones. It's okay. Peacemaker. Ah. Oh. If, if, if you watch James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, you were introduced to the character, the Peacemaker, played by John Cena. Uh, and apparently James Gunn was so fascinated and loved The Peacemaker so much, he wrote a, uh, a series on HBO for it. And uh, it's really fun. I mean, I I've, 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 I've looked for... John Cena is a really, really funny actor. Uh, he he has a great sense of humor. He's charismatic and he's very funny. But there hasn't really been the thing that kind of I think takes advantage of uh, the, the the kind of John Cena of it all. Uh, and and I think ha playing a very earnest character like Peacemaker is, who is very funny and warped and weird is uh, uh, very much taking advantage of, of all the things that kind of make John Cena a really funny performer. Uh, if you like James Gunn's humor, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's all there. Um, Does it connect to the Suicide Squad film? It, it, yeah, it, it literally picks up where the after credit scene of the Suicide Squad oh, left right off, on. which was uh, a, you know, Peacemaker-centric. Mm. Uh, and then and then goes from there using the characters and plot lines that were set up in in the Suicide Squad, but th that's spelled out for you in a in a you know a, a pre scroll oh. at the beginning. If if you didn't see it, you don't you don't need to see the Suicide Squad. It'll it'll catch you up. Is is it all out or is it a weekly thing? It's that's the one thing about this home box office, Bryce. See, they don't they don't do the binge. You got even though because this is an HBO wait. Max. Yeah, but even then, I think Max Max. Doles them out one by one. Interesting, because they didn't do that with Search Party, which also just came out. But yeah, it looks like they're doing weekly. Wow. Yeah. But did Search? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then meanwhile, know. I don't know. Like uh, Gemstones, they did first two, and then and then week weekly. Yeah. It's crazy. You can do HBO. anything now. Yeah. Although I think that they did the first two just because they fit far better as two episodes back to back than uh, than before than 
they, they, they just did one. The first one was like, okay. But when you put them with the other one, then you kind of know what's going on. Uh, Andrew? Big fan. Loving that. Loving that season. Loving this season so far of Righteous. But mm, Bryce made a face. Bryce, well, Bryce. Wait, do you not like Righteous Gemstones? I do like Righteous Gemstones. I will, this is, I this will, is a lot of Don't make paranoia. me get Brian's knife hand. This is a lot of paranoia being spread. Hey, hey. <laughs> where'd I just you, saw this. Where'd you put the stuff? <laughs> I don't. Uh, and I notice my brightness is going in and out, but when I squint, it could bring it down. Um, all right, I'm a camera issue here. You're everybody. just too. Let's you're too on. bright. You're too bright. Uh, Andrew, uh, we've now all given our picks. You're the last pick to be given. <laughs> what are you gonna pick? My pick is Witcher season two. Yeah, uh, loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Season two, particularly in fantasy shows, are often super hard. You could tell that there's even a one line thing about, yeah, uh, the thing where one verse and the other verse were in different time. You know, it would obvious after the fact that they were different timelines, but clearly it was confusing, you know, and like they acknowledge the problem of season one with the weird timelines. Yeah. Um, Witcher, Witcher is great because Witcher is about this dude that kills monsters and they've got yes. prophecy and they got backstory. They got all that. Sometimes a little bit, I mean, a little prophecy heavy, but there's always monsters to kill. And you're I was never, very, and they were innovative, you're, nev you're never far away from a big old monster. that This man's going to stab right in the face. It's great. Yeah. That's, that's one prophecy you, you can always rely on is that there's about to be a monster. Well, and that's, you know, it's got stab shows him. knowing what the hell they are. Just, uh, especially in this era where there's so much content and you get a lot of stuff and some of it might be half baked or whatever, but like uh Witcher Kings to you gemstones, like, you know, th th this season, you know, has, has a, a, a whole mechanic to it that it's like, Oh wait, you realize now that you've seen another season of, of righteous gemstones, you're like, Oh, you tend to mostly think of the comedy because the characters are so funny, but this show has always relied on a kind of mystery plot. Like, and now we have another little mystery plot like that's going to unfold. That's fun. That's great. It's a sign that the creators know what the hell they're doing. And for you, I say, bless you shows that know what the hell you're doing. I um, love you. So my concern is, did you watch the trailer for the spinoff? Of The Witcher? Uh, at the very end, and I could not give less of a less of a yeah. rat's ass. They're, I was, yeah, they're doing a spinoff series of The Witcher called Blood Origin, um, which I watched it, and I saw that, and at first I'm like, wait, is this a Wheel of Time like preview or this? And then I'm like, no, it's the... And I'm like, there is this... I hope it's good, and I'll give it a chance, but man, there is this... There's a lot. Game of Thrones brought beget a lot of other fantasy shows. Yeah. And some of these fantasy shows feel like, yeah, we got some locations and, you know, Czechoslovakia we can go shoot at. You know, let's get some material, we'll put some people in peasant clothes and have them wander around with some swords and every now and VFX some magic. You know, like, I'm just. <laughs> bada big bang, bada boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Epic. Everybody, you're done. Yeah, so. that's what they loved about it, right? That's what they want. You have somebody go like, mm, not in my kingdom, and have somebody else say, <laughs> like, like oh, I didn't, I didn't tell the truth said. at all. Yeah, exactly. And then you go like, ah! and then, <laughs> and then uh, everybody has the magic shooty fingers, and uh, <laughs> you add in a couple of knife hands, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Well, dragons have been done, so this dragon is furry. I don't know. Furry dragons? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm watching like you know you watch Witcher, which is part of the story is ah the 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 hunting down of the chosen one, the prophecy you could bring about her destruction, which is fa fantasy trope. But it's a guy the the narrative is here's a guy that's job is killing monsters, cool. And then a Wheel of Time, which has got like 20 of those books, whatever. And I started watching that, and it's like yeah, we gotta hunt down the person in the prophecy who could bring about our this. Yeah, but no, first like, we gotta find some space greasers to hire. All right, all right, settle down. <laughs> no, no guy, like, settle you're, down. Yeah, you're going to settle down about the space <laughs> greasers. <laughs> Justin settle is down. ruling with respect settle right now, down. Brian. Yeah. Respect yeah. the respect. Um, oh, respect no. me. <laughs> respect I'm afraid. Me. I have not watched anything of Boba Fett. Uh, that, that's why I'm trying to. I'm, 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 <laughs> we don't I'm working to hard. It. We have I'm to get out of here. We gotta get out of here, or else we'll talk about it.
Okay. Uh, if you haven't watched What If, Marvel What If, watched all of those. Boom! Awesome. So good. Awesome, yep. awesome, awesome. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I hint- like the idea that it, yeah, that it might be an incubator. An incubator, yeah. and hint for things. The little, come. little, little soft, not quite spoiler, but for anybody, if you started watching and haven't finished, watch them all, because you know what? They all tie together. Mm-hmm. Sounds like the last thing that I want. <laughs> It sounds like the exact reason I would not want. Well, no, no it's good. It's good. No, it, 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 it's no. it's very it's it's very well done. I mean, if the one thing that I love the most about it is that what if is such a great idea for a rich universe. If you have a rich universe where a lot of things are really interesting, then the idea of hey, let's tell fun stories, alt stories to these sure. archetypes, that's really cool. Uh, what the what what if ultimately does is also bring cool interesting ideas to the the watcher character and that's that's where everything revolves the the, the writing's really good bryce you'd like it. yeah the, the point is bryce it's not oh you have to watch it's like oh and sure. it's like hey and then what if we do an episode where these all tie in and it's like oh cool yeah 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 i've seen a few but go ahead just but are you going to just be like, like I've seen a few uh, I'm fresh. Fresh. i don't just, like it man just, sorry what were your thoughts on foundation again all right, stinks. Uh, did you finish it? Did you finish Foundation? I did not. Yeah. I own up. Did anybody? No, I didn't. Did anybody? I didn't finish Foundation. Nope. Didn't do it. There was a thing with like we need but, to get the engine or something, I and I was like, nah, do you? How about I just never watch you again? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like you are finished with Foundation. Uh, <laughs> brushing my hands of Foundation. Get out of here. You know, you know, it is finished. What? There we go. Alrighty, everybody. We're gonna do All some right. after things here in a minute. Right. Brian, you, you gotta you, go, right? Yeah, you hang yeah. on for two seconds because yeah. I'm gonna. Uh, okay. Gonna All right. Uh, same. same. Yeah. Same. Okay. Hey, Brian. Uh, hey, man. Hello. Uh, I gotta. Uh, as soon as Justin's back, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a. I got a phone call from Bonnie during the program. Oh. Uh, and uh, and texted her, and just saw her enter, and she flashed me a look. And I don't oh. know what it means. <laughs> so oh, so uh, l- let me just say I'm glad I had, didn't go through with my knife hand <laughs> <laughs> journey. <laughs> uh, anything? Did you do anything cool the past couple of days, the past week? Uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, uh, it's uh, we. Uh, oh, uh, you know what was tremendous was the uh, 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 Andrew Heaton's uh, book release event. Oh, right. The, and then uh, we did, then we did uh, brunch the following day and, and got to meet uh, Heaton's parents and, and see a bunch of his friends. And uh, it was it was great. That's nice. Uh, there's uh, one, one of his short stories um, it, it was so good that as soon as I got home, uh, I, I uh, went to Penny's room and I was like, "Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna force you to read this short story. It's only like I don't know eight nine pages. It's gonna feel mm-hmm. like homework, but then hopefully you'll find it to be a gift." And uh, uh, and I left the room and when I came back, uh, I just I wish I had a photograph of it, but you know the book opened in front of her and a big grin on her face and she just nods and she goes, "It's a good bit." <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Alrighty. Uh, cool. All well, right. We've got Justin well, here, so yeah. I'll see, yeah. I'll see you guys for get the uh, get the uh, hell out of here. On. All right. Get out of here. Uh, yeah, and don't and, and also I, I don't know if you, you you did see, but we've got Tom wants to yeah. to be early on cord killers. Tom wants to be early. Alrighty. Uh, hey Justin. Old early Tom. Old early. Hey Bryce. Wow. What's going on? Oh, you glad know. we're both wearing hats. We're both wearing hats today. Uh, we're I, men of. of one hat each. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been wearing a beanie around the house a little more. Are you are you willing I'm, to make twenty twenty two a beanie year? I'm I'm willing to throw it in the rotation for sure because I like the hats. I think they do a good yeah. job of helping me mostly just keep my hair back without making it look like a mullet. Yeah. Um. But I have a kind of a big head. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a, like a mm. I don't know. I feel like I have a deep head, and so like with this, like. I have to do it with only like two clicks, or sometimes I can do it with three. But then it's it, then it's really tight. It can get really tight on my forehead, yeah. and then I get a mark and I get sweaty. Where the beanie, like it is a little hot, but it, there's not that pressure and the sweat. I want you to become a beanie man. Well, we're, we're a beanie 
beanie person. Be- well, we're not too far from from that reality. I mean, I think that we're 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 certainly in the weather for it now. You know, that is it's true. a little chilly. It's a little nippy out. It, it certainly doesn't turn heads right now with this with this weather with yeah. this weather we're having. I think they uh, call them toques. 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 Tooks. Oh, you know, I feel like I've heard that word before. T O O K, I think. Oh, is it T O O K? Yeah. Let me see. I think it's the Canadians that call them Tooks. I found Tooks Meat Market. So Damn. Damn, look at that steak. Brian has a knife hand. <laughs> Chops it up at Tooks. <laughs> uh you're muted, Andrew. Brian the Benihana chef. Yes. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and he, he does the little uh, 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 flip the shrimp tail in your hat. Yeah, he could do for you there, right in the studio. He could. Yeah. Um, oh, you know, I found an article a, f- a few weeks ago that I would like to, that might be a good after things topic mm-hmm. um, about um, computer literacy. That's great, Bryce. But the part of me that wants to just say jerk things to you for no good reason wants to go, no. But of course that is a good suggestion, and let's do it. Let's do it. Let's have a let's have a little chat. He just tunes me out. Cool. It's incredible. I just, 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 just like, I have, I have to know, scroll he's looking. through he's, to yeah, find yeah. it. And it's <laughs> yeah. he's just scroll on there. All these, you know, wordle stuff. It's a lot and, of wordle stuff. And uh, how are you doing on Wordle, by the way? I'm doing okay. I I've stubbed my toe the past couple of days, but I'm 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 getting solves. I'm 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 not having any issues. It's brought me and my mother closer together. Oh, you're playing it now? You were I'm not playing, playing it, it last with week. my mom. Oh, and that's... so I I I was like, Mom, let's play this game. And now she's better than me, and I resent her for it. <laughs> she I got... ignored it, and then the people I worked with because I tried it first, I didn't read the directions, and I messed up, <laughs> and then I felt embarrassed. Yeah. And then uh, somebody that I work with is like, Oh yeah, here's my little trick for like getting it. You know, my first word that I use, which helps. I'm like, oh, that's a good first word. And then I'm like, oh, then I did it. And I kept solving. I'm like, cool. My... Well, what an amazing phenomenon. We'll talk. We'll do your article and also we could talk about that a bit. too. Oh, yeah, that would be good. Um, yeah, because there's there's also stuff going on there. Uh, here we go. That This is it from and Nielman, Nielsen Group. OK, from Nielsen. Great. Uh, cool. And And like I've. I've read this and I know the like big plot, but I don't know all of the exact details, um, number wise. But I do know I knew I do know some good information about this. So, all right, uh, you guys want to do some after things? How are you feeling, Andrew? I feel good. Cool, Justin, you ready? Uh, I've never been more ready in my entire life. All right. Well, I'm doing good here. Uh, then I'll count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, I can do it again. Three, yep. two. I was doing the Wordle on my phone. <laughs> no! I was doing it on my iPad. <laughs> I'm like, let me just put this, set this down. Let me know. Like... All right, I'll catch you in again for the intro to After Things here in three, two, Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Mr. Justin Robert Young. Good evening. Oh, our evening listeners uh, are welcomed. Bryce, I understand that you have an article that you wanted to read. Yeah, I saw this article um, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago um, that came out from the Neil- that from Nielsen Norman Group, uh, and it, it talks about. Um, computer skills right we're, we're we are in a we're in a highly technologized highly technologic world computers and 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 high tech um tools are available to us and what this um study found was that uh, uh almost a quarter of people a quarter of adults um cannot use a computer um in what they described as uh the Derek Zoolander effect. Uh, they they describe technology proficiency in different levels. Sorry, so they have fourteen percent of people are quote below level one. Uh, a task of something that is below level one efficiency, uh, te- uh, technical proficiency is uh, tasks are based on well defined problems involving the use of only one function within a generic interface to meet one explicit criterion 
without any categorical or, in, or inferential reasoning or transforming of information. Few steps are required and no sub goal has to be generated. For example, delete this email message would be a below one, a below level one skill and 14% of the adult population cannot do that. What was the age for that group though? Um, uh, I, l let me check, but I believe it's 16 to 65. It is, it is looking at uh, young, yeah, but young adults would, to elderly adults. I know the problem with that is if you tell me, oh, 16% of the population can't use computers and like, well, 90% of those people were over the age of 60. I'd be like, well, mm -hmm. okay. Um, well, and so then you go on to say level one, right? That's below level one. Level one is a, is, a, 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 is quote, the, the use of widely available and familiar technological applications like email software or web browser, little or no navigation is required, uh, involves few steps and a minimal number of operators. For example, find all emails from John Smith is a level one task. Uh, they say that, uh, and and twenty nine percent of the adult population um, is cannot do that. Can can do that. Wait, can can wait. Yes, only twenty nine percent of the population can find uh, or, all emails. Uh, 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 sorry, this is this is compounding. So twenty. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm I'm looking at the data in this in a very strange way. But there you go. Uh, twenty six percent. Twenty nine percent of people are firmly in level one. They are above level, above, above below level one. Um, could you share the graph with me or the, the link? This one? Yeah. Um, this is uh, a distribution by 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 country here. The USA is on the left. Um, but but ultimately it it. But <laughs> I love it. The lowest level, the below level one, or no, it's below below level one is just can't use computers <laughs> and then there's but, so, below one terrible well, level one poor level two medium level three strong oh yeah and and uh, well, like, I, I wanna... uh, okay i i mean i i i again like I, I i know you've got some very good crit criticisms of this and and i just want to make it clear before we get into that that i didn't it's not as I, I'm interested in the concepts behind this, not just. I am too. Person. I'm too. But pull that chart. I want to show you something. Like I know nothing about the data, and I'm saying that the the, the like I believe I mean, it's, it's just something that went hard. Can you tell me what is what like who is who has the highest rate of nobody being able to use a computer? Uh, per per this graph, uh, that is Japan. Uh, with okay, with 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 approximately thirty five percent. Yeah. Two factors. One is have you ever seen a Japanese keyboard? For heaven's sake. Uh, two, uh, so smartphone heavy, also oldest. That is one of the oldest demographics on here. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. um, I, I think this data is, it's interesting, but without knowing how it skews by age, if you told me for 30 year olds, if you said we with a survey of 30 year olds, it'd be like, okay, that's useful to me because then I understand what is the, is there a trend what is what is the biggest reason for this trend? Now, sure, I, I will say that there is something that that is very serious and very relevant to our modern world for which data like that is very valuable, and that is where solutions, especially in a post pandemic world, uh, how much we should be relying on computer specific or online specific solutions. Like, right, uh, I was thinking about this today uh, on Wednesday. The federal government is going to put up a website where free COVID tests will be sent to you, four per household. But while for folks who are <laughs> above level three or whatever that is, which I, I presume was defined by being able to do something more complex than searching for emails, mm -hmm. uh, you are self-selecting on that. Like, like there, there is only so many people that are going to A, B, up on the news enough to know this thing exists, B, have the internet, C, feel comfortable enough that they want to go online and put their address in to any kind of, of thing and then have the technical proficiency, which we might, especially if you're listening to this podcast and you are downloading a uh, downloading a podcast and <laughs> listening to it, uh, that we find to be very, very, very rudimentary. I, I, I do think that we we should understand exactly where our tech literacy is before we start trying to solve large problems with online only solutions. Yeah. I, and and that's that's my reason to bring this up. Not 
the specific, uh, I mean, I, I also wish I knew more about the age because you're right, Andrew, like that is a big part of it. But I think that that doesn't change. Uh, uh, I, I think that's important to know in terms of age, but I think it's still, uh, it's, it still seems like reliable data about that, a that age cohort um, today. And, and it, it, it I don't know. Reading reading this article, and we'll have it linked in the show notes. Um, it just just made me go, oh yeah, you know, like uh, you know, it, not just in terms of accessibility for 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 folks who may be differently abled, but just general computer literacy. Like you do need to make it. We need to make things much more simpler for 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 people. Or we we cert not maybe I don't know. We should. We can. There are still ways to go. There is still space to go on making things simpler or There's, easier for um for 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 people to get things technologically okay. done two things uh yes and uh this study is five years old okay um which is a big factor in, in the smartphoneization of how things have implemented there i i know of several very successful people who don't use computers at all Mm -hmm. Right. And and maybe they do they, they maybe do a mobile device for a phone and maybe that got them into texting and stuff, but there are some very high profile successful people who manage to not use this. One of the things that's sort of funny is that like you know, sometimes you'll see we you know, about six, seven, maybe ten years ago, we got exposed to sort of a bit of like actor naivete when you realized a lot of actors didn't know how Twitter worked or Facebook worked and stuff and seemed kind of rather silly because you realized, oh, yeah, this person never sent an email in their life. Like they never had to do that because somebody else always did that for them. And like, man, they're really alien and strange. I, I do think we we I, I'm very much a believer in computer education, computer skills, and making the barrier and entry very easy. It's one of the reasons that when I can ever I can do hackathons and teachathons and stuff. I love to do that stuff because I enjoy teaching and communicating. Because I think these skills can be super super empowering. That being said, is uh, you know. I, I think everybody should have the opportunity to be able to read books, but if you don't want to read books, you don't have to read books, and and it doesn't make you less of an intellectual, less of an interesting person. And perhaps some cases we talked about before, like you know, like I was like in my Twitter sphere, I was surprised that people I followed, you know, didn't know the same things that I knew, that I perceived to know, that I thought I knew about the state of the world and stuff because they weren't listening to that. And when we are be very, you know, when we're when everything comes to us through Wikipedia and comes to us through our screens, it does narrow our understanding of the world. And and there are some people I've known of at least two people that were extremely successful, highest point of success you could imagine, either CEOs or politicians that were probably dyslexic or whatever and did not use really computing devices the way we do. They were extremely social people, though, and the thing they used, their, me their medium was the phone. They were yeah. on the phone eight hours a day talking to people and networking, and they under they could tell you more about what's really going on in their circle. And that's the thing I think about. Like, I know more about what's going on in the world than I do other than my friends or family when somebody posts a text. So yeah. I would say that I would say that I would say that what scares me would be the person the would be people not having the skills to be able to do use some elect networking of some kind of electronic form, whether it be the phone or computers. Yeah. And I, I don't I it it, it, I, it that that just made I don't know that that makes me recalibrate and and uh, think about how I approach things differently you know like I I do marbles and marbles is meant to be as simple as possible but at the end of the day like you have to be on Twitch you have to have a Twitch account you got to do the chat thing and that's yeah, not that yeah, difficult yeah, yeah, yeah but, you have to you have to either via the internet on a desktop and direct your browser to this website you or, or have a smartphone and download the app or go on it on your mobile browser. Like, yeah. uh, uh, there, like there's a lot of barriers to entry before you get to the point of like, it's super simple. Just in the chat, use a, a, a exclamation point play or whatever. Right. Um, so I don't know. I, I just, I, I thought that was, was, a, well, an interesting sort of centering idea, whether look, or not this is old, whether the data no, is whatever. No, I, but I, I think I, like it's it's just a, rem a reminder that like we we are, operate on a different I, technological level of comfortability 100%. that a lot of people like I grew up with computers and a lot of people did not. And that that will change over time. But there's that doesn't mean that we get to leave those people behind either. 
I did a I did a talk at a conference in Colorado, and I was talking about writing. And then this twelve year old kid raised his hand. He says, "Like, hey, uh, you know, was asked me like if I had any suggestions for software for the phone." And I said, "You can you can write on your phone." I said, "I've written something on your phone." I said, "You know, but like, can I get? But you know, you can just open up Google Docs on your computer." And he's like, "He's like, I don't, I don't have a laptop, right?" Which you know, a lot of kids. And this is a kid that even most kids in schools have access to laptops. I don't have a laptop. Talk to him a bit. And then his uncle was there, and I realized this is a kid that his parents had like split up, and he kind of was living between homes and stuff in a really, you know, rough situation. Yeah, it was a thing I just knew took for granted. Long story short, he got himself, he got a laptop after that. But point was, is that it was just I just, you know, assumed, you know, like oh, well, anybody has access to this or whatever. Here was a kid that wanted to write, wanted to do this, was only confined to his phone, and then you know, um you you don't think about that. And so Bryce, your point, like, yeah, you just don't think about this is a kid that's in the cracks and the system and whatever. And so, um, yeah, you know. I mean, I was talking about this with somebody else about gaming the other day as well, just because, you know, the the online and the, the digital revolutions have have made it so much easier to make stuff. But gaming is still kind of a little out there. But uh, between I don't know, I think about the way that I interact with people on daily and and seeing this article made me kind of just realize like oh yeah well like i you know have home internet and i have mobile internet and i pay for for these apps and i pay a phone bill and um that that stuff adds up and it, it, it i i don't know i i think that um there's there's a there is a gap there right the the uh, digital divide or or what have you. Th yeah. There there's a gap that we still aren't fully all the way there yet, um, and not it... not in not that we're like in the stone ages, but because I think it's a, it's I... an idea that we can get even further with it, the technology. It, it's getting easier. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. I remember my parents pre iPhone, my parents post iPhone, pre iPhone. Like, what do we need an iPhone for? What do we need an iPhone post iPhone? They're always on their phones. They're they're as bad as teenagers about this. And once the need was there, there was stuff, the market was there, you know, like iPhones there, but like, you know, you can get, you can get a great laptop, uh, you know, tablet for 99 bucks. You can yeah. get a pretty good, you can get a computer for 200, $300. And that's what, you know, I, I bought for the kid, this netbook, this, like this, you know, Chromebook, whatever he could use. Mm. And it was, I didn't feel bad that I cheaped out and not getting him something fancier, but for him, it was fine. It was perfect. And like, those things are out there. And that's the sort yeah. of thing where. But for people, and the reason I brought up the elder thing is part of it is because they can be disconnected. It's not like they call their friend. Like if I'm like, if I want to learn more, if I want to, oh, I got a PC, Bryce, what do I do, do for Steam? I call you up and you're going to tell me what to do. If I'm elderly and I don't have that network, that's the problem. That's why I'm saying knowing where these people are. Is it income? Yeah. Is it elderly? Is it both? It might be low income and it might be elder people. It might be those two groups. And if we know where that is, we can say, okay, what can we do? You know, number one. Low-income person might have access to a cheap device, but maybe they don't know where to go or who to go access for, or maybe they know people, but they can't afford it or whatever, and et cetera. It's like, okay, how do we solve that elderly? It's like, do you go to, do you say, oh, you know, if we want to help that, like, you know, do you go to retirement homes and do computer literacy? You know, do you teach classes on that? Do you do yeah. stuff like that? There could be, I mean, libraries do this. A lot of library systems do stuff like that, which is great, so. Yeah, and and I like I think those are both very plausible demos that 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 take up this space um yeah so yeah i don't know that was it's that's i an interesting and I look at, recalibration oh i look at like i you know five years ago i did no only did enough to like put up a wordpress site or do whatever else like that i barely did that and then now like i've you know as you know i've jumped full in and now i'm like very I think about things like the way I think about solutions and stuff is very different from before because not just how to use a computer, but how to code. And that's a sort of thing too. When you think about, Oh, I know how to solve that problem because oh, I know this information's here. I just use this thing to do that. And it is, but you also get into the point where you have the tools, but that you don't have any more ideas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, like what I do with it. I, I, this is my, my regular pitch. Like I encourage anybody listening to this who is slightly curious in learning to code, learn to code. Start with JavaScript or Python. I say Python because it's very easy to use these Colab notebook, Google Colab, and go do a notebook, and you don't have to install anything. It just works in browser. JavaScript is great because it runs everywhere. You can build anything on it. So those are, and I get people like, oh, you should learn. Go. I'm like, I will. I'm adamant about this. Like, 
start if you want to start long language, start with JavaScript because you can do a ton of stuff with it. If you just want to mess around and you know, like ah, make things do stuff and maybe do cool data science stuff, make Python's good. But yeah, it is so accessible. It is so accessible. Like everybody listening to this, you're 30 seconds away from having a window open and being able to code and do something and seeing something happen. Yeah. Well, speaking of, and, I'm assuming this is made in some form of JavaScript. But speaking of web apps taking over the world, WAPs. Well, yeah. Do we? <laughs> Uh, well, mm, uh, fuck it in a mop. We, <laughs> um, can we talk about Wordle? We can. Can we please talk about Wordle? Yes. Uh, yes. If, if you don't know Wordle, I I feel like I had a really tough time explaining this on Great Night last week. Yeah. Um, Wordle is a is a daily word game. Yes. Every day there is one secret word. Uh huh. A five letter word. A five letter word, and you go to the web page. You don't log in or just sign up or anything. You just go, and you guess. You guess what the you have six guesses, uh, to guess what the word is, and, it, and when you make a guess, it tells you which letters are in the right place. Yeah. Which letters are not in the right place? Which letters are not? It the does word. not have a lot of instruction on it. Uh, it uh, it's got a how to play. That usually should pop. Well, up. I don't know what level my mom falls under, but she was she was <laughs> uh, 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 frustrated and confused by uh, the 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 interface and what she felt was the lack of of uh, 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 of of instruction. instruction. Interesting. That being said, once you get through one play of the game, it it, it, it becomes fairly clear. Yeah. If you've played Mastermind, it's basically once Mastermind. Seen. Yeah. So so effectively you take a guess at a, at a five letter word and there are some strategies as to what better guesses are. What what uh, uh I tend to do is try to find something with a lot of vowels in it so you can at least kind of uh nail down what 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 the vowels are going vowels to be are, yeah. uh or what they're not. And then at that point you are just taking the information gleaned and uh, uh and, and by the way even if you get nothing uh, you would now at least know what isn't in the word. Yeah. And uh, you can go from there. But but I think what has made it a, a phenomenon is that every day there is one word and everybody's sure. playing the same thing, so much in the same way that like the New York Times crossword puzzle is, is a coup, uh, you know, a social coup of like, oh, did you get blank? Uh, this has the same thing, and it was very, very smart that it made a, a little quick output of uh, these emoji of, of of emojis that you can either text your you know friends and family or uh, put up on Twitter. It has a very easy share function there. I am sharing the Google Trends for Wordle, and it kind of tells you everything you need to know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um. Um, yeah, it turns out, look, it turns out mostly hot, uh, right now. <laughs> and look at re look where, look where, uh, let's see the district of Columbia. Ooh, <laughs> number one though. What's number one, the district of Columbia. Um, uh, it changed for me. I got Vermont was number one for me. Oh, Vermont. interesting. It's number three for me. Uh, but, uh, but it, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Like in, Two different servers that I'm in, they've like made uh, Wordle channels, text channels, so people can just talk about Wordle. It's, it's, it's neat, and I, I think part of what makes it a really interesting case study in 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 success for for creative work online is, it's it's a, just a dead simple app that gives everything Dirt away. Dumb. Dirt dumb. It's, yeah. It, there's no ads. The creator said he's not going to put ads on it. There's no subscription thing. There's not even an app. It's all based on the web. So uh, you can do it wherever and whenever on whatever your device is. Um, I, I don't know. I think that it's it's very freeing to see something cool like this just given out to everybody. Like there's it has it very much has it, like some thing. some old Internet kind of vibes to it. Uh, the same guy who did this is the man who did the the Reddit button. The button, oh, the button that it, yeah. like had to be pressed or, or w would continue to exist if somebody pressed it once uh, uh, within a 24 hour period that he put up on Reddit. The man certainly knows how to draw a crowd on the Internet. Uh, uh, this story uh, behind Wordle 
apparently started out as like a thing he was doing for his wife. He wanted to give his wife a, a, a fun thing to do every day. Uh, so, you know, who knows how much of that is concocted, but my, 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 my cynical, uh, uh, mind aside, the product's great. It's really fun. It, it's immediately understandable. People get it. And boy, do people love sharing how fast or how slow they, 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 they got their wordles. I mean, it dominated my Twitter almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, it just, Oh no, yeah, Andrew. Have you what's your have you played it, Andrew? What's your experience with it? Well, yeah, first time through, I didn't understand it because I didn't bother reading the instructions. And I screwed up. Then once I got it, I played it and I slay at it. Um, uh, it is uh, it, to Justin's point, like yeah, the narrative is like oh, he made it for his partner and da da da. Like it's cool and like why do people make narratives like that? I don't know. So you get New York Times headlines like yep. Wordle is a love story. Sure. <laughs> Like, yeah. I yeah. Cool. Again, look. I I don't I don't want to. I like. I, I, it's very easy to sneer. Uh. Uh. But the guy knows how to draw a crowd. <laughs> I, 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 that's all yeah. I will do is just salute the man knows how to draw a crowd on the internet. Uh. Uh. So I, so so cheers. I will say it reminded me a lot of the Flappy Bird phenomena to the point where it makes me think it will disappear in two weeks. It's um, going to disappear. Flappy Bird was a fidget spinner on a phone. Yeah, sure. And the, the circumstances are not the exact same, right? The Flappy Bird person had, I don't know, the Flappy Bird person got a lot of attention and then took it out because of the attention. That also had a weird, you know, because he was in Vietnam, right? And there was like yeah. a weird government thing. It, and he was like using Super Mario assets and like a bunch of yeah, questions. Yeah, that, was, that was an odd thing. The one thing I'll say about Wordle is that like it very much scratches the same itch as, as things that are, you know, around for a while like word puzzles are very very popular this uh certainly is about as cool as you can update a a word puzzle in that it's a it's very quick mm. uh it's it's fun it's addictive because you can't play it all day you can't burn yourself out on it uh uh it has done a very very i i think that emoji solution to me is 80 percent of its success Absolutely. The fact that there's the social proof of, oh, I want to like, it's, it's just a manageable enough challenge that you want to take it on, but it is substantial enough that you feel good when you get it, or you feel frustrated when you don't. And then you can just go ahead and roll it on back the, the, uh, the next day. So yeah, and, I, I do think mm -hmm. it'll wane in popularity mm -hmm. probably. Uh, but, I, I don't know. I, I think it's got uh, of all the random internet things. I, I I think it's it's you know word puzzles are popular. People like that. It and it's amazing because like we had the number of Oculus Quest headsets that were sold that the, the people activated in the last month is insane. Like more Oculus Quest came online than existed before. Something it's like the huge huge optic. And I don't, I'm not in tune with the zeitgeist of the world, but the one game that I've heard everybody talk about is F and Wordle, a thing that you could have yeah. made 25 years ago. Yeah. But though the environment at which it got traction didn't exist, sure. to be sure. And, but uh, what does it say? Let me finish my thought. For game designers out there, what's the lesson? Just make something fun. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think that Wordle did buy itself a lot of leeway by not doing a sign up, by resisting the temptation to say like, "All right, well, let's get all the the data and the accounts and and uh, you know they're able to track. I get, I assume via IP, uh, uh, IP and 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 Mac Mac address like that. You know, it knows that I've played however many days in a row yeah. <laughs> on I, my phone. When I think it just does that with cookies because okay, if yeah. you play on your computer, it won't have the it same It won't have the thing. same thing, yeah. And yeah, you can do that cookie or web storage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was a weird thing. I did not realize this in iOS. You know how you can take a web page and make it an icon on your home page? Yeah. Right? That, when you press that, is not Safari. Or the cookies, John Gruber mentioned this, but the, the cookies for that uh page yeah. are separate from your safari cookies so if you have a wordle app if you have a wordle applet. icon yeah. applet 
the cookies are not the same as the browser, and so it doesn't keep your streaks and stuff. Uh, which so is you very have to strange. always play on the thing that you want to have it keep. If you if if that stuff's important to if you, yeah. if you're like I don't know how long have I been playing this game. It's also a good sign that there have been uh, derivative games pop up. There's a there's a Spanish language one that I've seen that some friends play. Wordle uh, es. Um, there's Swerdle, which is only four letter words and they're okay. mostly <laughs> naughty words. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a sign that that's a sign of something that has got traction more it's than a, just the one that's hit wonder. A, but. Yeah. Rubber neckers, uh, ambulance chasers. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I think that 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 shows that there is enough popularity to go around that 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 people want to scratch that itch. And I would say it only probably is driven upward by the fact that you can only play this game once a day because it's just. One word. Yeah. It uses local storage. I'm just looking at this, the JavaScript in here. Oh, um, nice. So it's saving yeah. it inside your local storage, uh, which is why you can't. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Bryce, our host of a show where people literally watch gravity work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, literally, it's gravity. Everybody have a good, I have a game. It's called Gravity. We watch things fall on an inclined plane in a curve. Yeah, you gotta have a curve. If you don't have a curve, what are you doing? You're so box derby. Yeah, right. it's not you bad. gotta have a curve. It, and it, but it's it's we are. It, you never know. Like in good games, are good games. Tetris is still a fun game. Like yeah, the number I was showing my girlfriend, my fiance, I was showing right. her. <laughs> I was we're flipping through, and I'm showing like a bunch of games, like on the Apple Arcade, whatever. I'm like, half of them are using eight bit style graphics. Half of them why? And like, why is that? It's because it's like. It's not just, oh, it's just stylish or whatever. Our brains fill in the rest of the information. And it's like, why why is Mickey Mouse a good caricature? It's enough information to do that. It's the right side of that valley to give you information and detail. And it's its own, you know, I'm ha- I'm in a game mode. I'm in a game world or whatever. And, and these things work really, really well. And so it is... I, I'm all for pushing the ed- edge. You look at like NVIDIA's doing with like really crazy cool graphics and capabilities here. Yeah. You know, open AI, what we've done with like Codex and our ability, like, you know, when people start putting Codex in a game engines and stuff and the idea they'd be able to write games just by describing them is cool. But at heart, it's all about gameplay. Like a st- I'm, a, I'm a storyteller and I admire games because gaming is a different s- game design, different skill. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, I forget where I saw it. It was somewhere on Reddit, and I forget what the what the prompt was. But somebody was talking about games and what they liked about them. And the top voted comment was, "Their priorities for a game are for them was like story, mechanics, graphics, and whether or not you would put mechanics before story is up to you." But I do think that we are going through an era of like, all right, look, if you're trying to do you know, the higher end of graphics, you better have a team and, 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 and money. And, and, and it is just a different world than just saying like, Hey, do you have a good mechanic? Do you have a good idea? Do you have a good, uh, uh, do you have a good story? Oh, damn. Like, what? Oh, don't look at the JS. I just found all the words. Oh yeah. That was a big thing is, is all of the words for Wordle are just stored in the JavaScript. You could just find them. Yeah, which oh. it's a game based upon, sorry, to remember, it's a game based upon good faith, like why cheat at Wordle, you know, like there's no point to it. And I'm just looking at here and I'm like, oh, didn't want to know that. So wait, does Although it have I'm the word have a... the word list? Yeah, or it has it... the word list and what days each word will be. Oh, well, it's not gotcha. literally, literally, I just looked up, I said, I just Googled, I mean, I did a search for one of the words and it popped up and right before it was the word from yesterday and the word before that was a word for yesterday mm. before. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so you could figure it out if yeah. you wanted but but no, I think you're right, Justin, because you know uh, uh, I've, I've got a clip of it here. But uh, they like they put out this really f- fascinating Matrix demo on the Unreal Engine on the PlayStation, um, and it's like part live action, part um, real time uh, CG or uh, not CG, but just com- well, I guess computer graphics, but real time yeah. uh, uh, graphics. Um, and and then they open it up to the sandbox and you can actually fly around the city and drive and all sorts of stuff and that's cool like the the un, it's very cool to see the unreal engine push 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 further but push the limits yeah but you know at the end of the day what you do in that demo is you uh 
uh, hold the button when it says that you're shooting the right people until you're done shooting the people, and then you fly around an empty a, a, a city with nothing to do. Yeah. Um. And that and that's the thing is like you know if you look at the rise of indie games, the rise of mobile games, the rise of of, of, of everything, it's like if you have an idea, I mean nothing, no amount of money will be able to beat a simple, beautiful idea, you know. And and that's I always joke with John Teasdale, who I made contender in action news with that like my life's goal he is a very intricate game lover like he loves the games that are like got of the gigantic book that you're punished if you don't read it twice like you know he loves that stuff and i'm like if i can invent uno i would kill myself immediately <laughs> like that would be the greatest thing that i could possibly do the, the greatest goal is the simplest possible thing <laughs> Uno, ah, like that's it. I will have known. I have we, like put it on my gravestone. I'm slumped over a chair with some index cards or some weird stuff written on them, <laughs> but they're covered in blood, so we don't know what they say. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, and and I, I think that that's that's the lesson that you see with all these indie games that go that go wild. Uh, uh you know, just. I, I, this is a, a larger kind of meta point, but it's like the more you can communicate, the clearer the message that is in your head that you can get out to as many people as possible. That's the secret to everything. It's the secret to creation. Absolutely. Like is is just how, the fidelity of going from your brain to other people's brain uh, without the static or the noise getting in the way. And And there's a balance there. I was thinking about this the past week. Or so, but like there's a balance there between the simplicity of the message cutting through the noise and like the fidelity or the accuracy of your message, right? Yeah. You know, a shorter, simpler message has a lot of impact, but you also don't get the nuance of it. Where a very nuanced statement or or concept idea can be very intellectually interesting and very interesting if if you, you know, are able to dig all the way down, but you cut people out who that appeals to. You know, there, uh, uh, Andrew was once telling me of an idea he had for a story, uh, where it'd be like a time travel story where modern people would end up, let's say, in like ancient Rome, and and this is there's no TARDIS language thing, so everybody's just kind of yelling at each other, and everyone's confused, and then eventually at some point somebody farts, <laughs> and everybody laughs. <laughs> like and that's something that's always stuck with me the idea that like beyond the fact that farts are hilarious like uh, uh that it's like why does that cut through s space and time and language and culture and everything because it is a a common idea that we all understand that we understand from from childhood and it doesn't matter how much we're ashamed of it doesn't matter how much we find it hilarious it it matters that we know it and mm -hmm. and that the concept of fidelity for ideas is something that I think uh, uh, the more I have come to understand that as the true North Star and less the complexity of the idea that I can think of, the, the, the better my work has become. There's, it's interesting when you look at like, why was Mickey Mouse like a global phenomenon? You know, why did people watch Mickey Mouse everywhere? Easy to understand, simple conflict. Dude's trying to get the steamboat down the river. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, thanks. Like, you know, he's just trying, trying to take his date out on a picnic. You know, just simple, simple conflicts. But the, the spatial descriptions between you know Mario, like the the genius of a Nintendo game, that first level teaches you how to play the game, and then you're into it. And there's a lot of, a lot of great kind of universal things that if you just stop to pick them up and look at them, you go, oh. Cool. I, I understand a little bit more about why a thing works, you know. And it can also be like, you know, movies sometimes people go like, oh, this movie sucks. It's like Spider-Man, you know, No Way Home. Like, I enjoyed it. Writing-wise, there's something going on at Marvel which kind of frustrates me where it feels like there's like, it's like a, eight factories building the thing and they just put the parts that kind of fit together and then put glue in between them. And some of the parts are pretty good, but it doesn't feel like, you know, a super a cohesive game. yeah yeah but each element I'm like oh it's really good it's really good and and like and i enjoy i enjoyed spider-man no way home let me let me get very clear i did it's not 
I love the other two better. I like the other two much better than this one. But I understand why this because this this gave us things. It was a wonderful gift of all these surprises in it were wonderful. But uh, it's worth analyzing. Why why is this the most successful Sony film of all time and going to be one of the top grossing MCU movies of all time? Why why is that? When and you look at like can't just say because MCU because you look at the box office performance of Black Widow, Chang Chi, and Eternals, and the MCU. Oh my God! Ain't there? You sure, know, they did. You know, yeah. So COVID, and, COVID, and get, you know, under you know, and 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 VOD and everything. But like, but yeah. But Spider Man, but people, people know the Spider Man story. He's a kid. He got powers. He lost his uncle or parents, whatever, and saves saves the like. It's not a it's not a complicated story. Even even what I assume that they set up in that third film is probably not. Well, I, I, I would say that I would say that too. It's like, and I can understand Eternals and Ching Chi having problems because are not known, but like Black Widow was known. Like she's been in a big part of the MCU before Spider-Man. And so she's been there, but that was a movie that did, you know, there, there sometimes things just sort of resonate in ways. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and, I don't know, this is going to get into kind of a, a separate no way home like thing, <laughs> but I think, a thing that Marvel's been really, really good at, and especially considering where they're going now with their multiverse stuff, is that they never want to spit in the face of their hardcore audience. Like, the biggest cheer and the most emotional moment in No Way Home involves characters from the lowest grossing and, and among the most reviled movies that is paying off things that happened in a movie that the least amount of people saw and, and uh, was, was disliked by the critics a lot. That being said, the people that ate that dog food love this character. <laughs> they, in fact, they probably love this character the most and they deserve to have that moment. And I think that's partly why they've, they've earned the kind of goodwill. They Marvel knows what their fans are. They know, what they want. And, and, and instead of doing some glib kind of like, well, you kind of sucked. Nobody liked this element of, of, of this thing. Like, uh, they, they, they honored every element of it. And, and I think that there's, there's, uh, there's an element of understanding who you're talking to and what you're going to do. And, and, uh, the best art, tends to have it. The best populist art tends to have it. I think like when, I don't know. And I've always liked that stuff more than I've liked the stuff that can hide behind the idea of like, well, you just didn't get it. Cause it was too complex. Sorry. You just didn't understand it. <laughs> yeah. Like I always hate I watched, that. I watched the red letter media guys defend uh midnight mass. Like, I don't know if you watched that. I which, haven't. I've uh, heard that. I've heard that that's good from the people who like horror films in my life. But I, I, I guy, it was an interesting premise. I got really boring, and then people, it was like I watched them defend like because there's there are points where people talk and they have conversations that don't go anywhere. They don't affect the outcome of the story or their characters and stuff. And they're like, well, you know, the guy, they're like going like, well, sometimes you know, like they're like, we like this, and I'm like, ah, a couple Catholic guys like this really deep Catholic discussion about death, you know, like oh, yeah, shocker. Um, but uh, I'm like. I could take their argument they said of why this was fine, and I could apply it to Phantom Menace. Yeah. And say, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'm like, so why why was that not okay? Why was this okay? Because you are interested in this. Yes. And if I was the super nerd Star Wars diehard fan, a Jedi Council, the minutes of a Jedi Council meeting would be riveting to me. And so, and I kind of made me think about, like, when we crit like, to me, I'm like, both were bad to me. Like, like I'm not, the story wasn't being served, but... And that's and that's what we look at, right? I mean, like how like the vast majority, the backbone of all the conversations, the hours and hours and hours of conversations that that uh, uh, Andrew, you and I have had about you know uh, art and especially movies and TV shows have largely centered on the idea of characters, plot, motivations. The things that we've appreciated the most have been the most elegant combinations of these things that have in surprising and exciting ways moved all those things forward. They made the characters more complex and rich. They made the plot uh, uh, seamless to the point where you were getting little things and then they eventually paid off in big ways. Uh, uh, but you know, some people pay attention to different things. Some people legit just go to movies because they want to see the costumes. 
Yeah, and I and I, it's, you can't you can't. I have to be careful to not undervalue other people having reasons for liking a thing, and in you know, because I like you know we ripped into uh, Rogue One, justifiably so, but if you're a person who likes games and role playing and stuff and that movie's riveting to you because you're uh, now I'm here and now I got to watch this go on and now and if you're looking if you're if you're at that level of it it's fine if you're looking at the bigger like wait why did they, what you're like what you know then it doesn't make as much sense but that doesn't mean and there are movies that I love that people would go like you like that yeah yeah hey hey what do you say we we do we do some picks huh Right. Why do you say we do some picks? Sure, some after things picks. Uh, uh, I'll I'll go. Go. Uh, I'm gonna right, pick the righteous Bryce, gemstones. Why don't you go, Bryce? Why don't you go, Bryce? I'll go. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go. Just gonna go, okay, everybody. Right, right, so gonna my go. pick's gonna be the righteous gemstones. Damn, that show's good. God, it's good. It's just so I just like being around them. It, ex yep. exactly. I was telling. I was talking to somebody else. I I think uh, Edie Edie Patterson is that her name? Oh, uh, yep. Uh, I think she is like the best actor on that show home and, run hitter and i don't remember any of her lines i don't remember any of the very very funny I things i remember she a few they're, of her lines they're yeah. great. i can't repeat any of them i know <laughs> now, in fact the one that i laughed at was from her <laughs> was was on the righteous gemstones subreddit of her reaction to uh uh eli's uh, admission uh, uh on last night's episode but, uh, oh yeah that was that was a uh, man this it's a very interesting show and i i think they they know what they're doing to some degree right um uh, gosh i can't talk about last week's episode without spoiling it but i think that they have shown that they know what they're doing in the face of some interesting decisions character motivation wise i, I love that and they did the same thing last season is they set up this is our predicament you're like all right and that's not the predicament yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh which i think they was also very used used very successfully in Succession. I think Succession is the same thing of and like to a much ha higher well, scale. Well, Succession of, I think does it in a different way. Sure. Whereas Succession is brilliant in that that world, it shows you kind of the surreality of that world that things that are the only world changing world breaking uh things that are threatening to tie, like just tear the universe that we know it is uh uh, uh you know uh, are, are are about to happen and everyone's panicked about it and then sometimes it just kind of goes away and 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 the next episode begins and you're like yeah you're gonna go to mom's birthday party <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like uh uh whereas i think righteous gemstones is a little bit more like they are, it, there's more of a con continuity. Well, I, I, I they're, they're, they're these, telling they're arcs. telling a different uh, uh, a different kind of story. Like it is very much a story driven. Like the characters are so funny, but they need to be brought along. Like and and you see this a lot with um, Danny McBride and and Jody Hill, and I think it's the reason why they love horror so much, which is obviously extraordinarily story. It's a very very story driven. Uh, uh, medium, like very blunt force, like literally. <laughs> There's a serial killer, and he's killing everybody. Get out of the house before the serial killer kills you. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that they they are not afraid to hit you over the head with what is is going on. But like like Andrew said, like they're also very savvy to be like hit you hit hit you with the okie doke here and again. And yeah, uh, uh, like I'll I'll just say I was very worried that the way one episode ended would lead to an entire season long. Well, what is they, what do they know? Oh, what do we know? What do they know? And it ended up being the best case, which was just, they talked to each other off screen. We're moving on. <laughs> we're going to the next step. Yeah. Um, Cause I just, I hate when shows do that. Just get stuck in one. Oh, thing that was like, like well, yeah, that's like what's horrible about lost was oh, yeah. they're like, a fr we can't have our characters talk because then the, 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 the jig is up. It's like, no, have your characters talk and have there be a conflict. And that's what they did. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, Bryce. Like, you're like, oh, is it going to be about... The and they're like, next season, they're in the car. I'm like, oh, we okay. Talked. okay. So, yeah. and then, but then he's like, I'm not buying it. I don't believe them. They told me the thing, but I don't... I'm like, oh, this is so much better. This yeah. is so much... 
rather than doing Three's Company, like the friggin' Three's Company, like Chrissy accidentally overheard him say something, you know, incomplete and whoop, right. that was lost, was like Three's Company logic after towards the end of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, and then just, good God, the talent, especially this season, to add uh, uh, Eric Roberts. Eric Andre? Uh, to add uh, uh, Eric Andre. Eric Andre. Yeah. yeah. Like, just uh, uh, amazing. It's, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're so, so, so good. And it's funny about Eric Roberts, because I remember, I think it was season one or whatever, there was a whole uh, best of the best, you know, he'd made, uh, you know, Jesse had made an Eric Roberts reference about, you know, best of the best, which is a great film, by the way. I don't yeah. know if you ever saw that. You ever seen and, Price? And, no, I don't. And, One of the best martial arts films there is. And we still haven't seen Uncle Baby Billy. We still haven't. Uh, haven't uh, we still haven't yet. gotten Uncle Baby Billy in our lives, which will which will be uh, which will be amazing. So, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I, I was the only time I ever fluttered on on Righteous Gemstones, which will be my pick as well. Um, is is like yeah, this is that first episode kind of some felt a little weird. I didn't know how much of it was you know that, that they had issues stopping their season, stopping their shooting during COVID. How much they had to recut, how much might have changed. Uh, uh, but as soon as they even got to the second episode, I was all in. And this episode, like, good lord, good lord, it's just so good. Stuff. Andrew, you got a pick? I do have a pick. I pulled it up here. I, I've mentioned this book before. It's The Attention Factory, the story of TikTok and China's bite dance. And um, TikTok is not an app that I can spend much time in because, like, literally makes my brain explode like the Max Headroom blipverts. <laughs> but it is undeniable and it is real and it's a very big thing. And it is ByteDance is a company that you'll almost you'll hear TikTok mention the news. You never hear ByteDance mentioned in the news. The founder of ByteDance and the, the co-founders, he is a fascinating, very, very clever guy that I think you know, probably should be mentioned in the same breath as Evan Spiegel and Zuckerberg, et cetera. Um, the, I think I may have said this before, like ByteDance literally was a company he was inspired by Apple and Steve Jobs quote about the intersection of, of, of you know, arts and technology. And that's where Byte and dance come from, art, technology, mm. different verse. Um, so the, the, every medium that takes off, there's often, and, and remember ByteDance is a family of products and TikTok being one of them. When something takes off, it's because they take something maybe we did before or they take something familiar and it makes it easier for us to do. Uh, Twitter was great because Twitter said, you know, maybe you don't have to have to write a blog post to justify sharing an article or to make a point. You can put something in 140 characters and put it out there and then that can be a meme in somebody else's head. Twitter became this amazing way for sharing memes. Facebook took kind of the group email and put it into, you know, a portal in the other and the other features and stuff and Facebook took off because of that. Um, and you still look at why does each medium work and what did TikTok do? You know, TikTok, like where Instagram worked because Instagram, like everybody has a camera, they take crappy cap cameras, we'll add a filter. And now you feel like now you're, now you want to share. And TikTok was taking that idea and they, the story, the book goes through the evolution of who, who did first, whatever. But hey, if we let people use 30 seconds of a song and then they have a thing to do, and also we have this culture of people emulating, which started, they showed like the spread of like how it started in China where people were copying what one person did and doing the, the like, don't judge me by changing the look and how that became, hey, there's a structure for a TikTok story. You know, one, we have music to increase. The music is like a filter. It increases the production value. And then here's a premise and here's a twist. And each time you watch this though, you get to see somebody different do this. And that's what's yeah. going to be. And you, you look at, and that's not all TikTok. Obviously, TikTok's way much more of that. But you look at like the main things that sort of keep driving and go get, you know, go spread. And they talk about like uh, what was it like Old Country Road or whatever, you know, like Old how, Town Road, uh, Old Town Road. You know how that spread. And yeah. and um, Lil Nas X is a genius. You look at this. You look at his history of this guy kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, kept trying stuff. Heard a loop, liked it, bought the rights to it, made the song and blew up and just. Amazing. But anyhow, you look at how like that took off when other people said, well, I'll do my version. And it's got that hook that fits that twist. And so anyhow, I'm a big, really enjoyed the book. It made me think a lot about why do things work? And ByteDance was a company where the founder was like, I am going to try to make something successful. I'm going to try to crack this thing while other people are at it. We're going to iterate and we're going to keep moving. Why did the other ones that were doing the same space, why did they either go away or get absorbed, et cetera? 
Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. I mean, the TikTok, I, I use, I, I do use TikTok a good bit, but it has, I think, set up its own language for how to share media, create and share media, which is the stitches, the duos, yeah, the pointing, the on-screen text stuff, uh, integrating a camera shooting app into the editing app, um, stickers, filters, voice effects, adding music, like, uh, it's 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 fascinating and yeah you see you see the 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 knockoffs or the copycats of like youtube stories and you look at instagram reels and all that stuff and uh i think they probably reels yeah i mean yeah i think yeah because snap snapchat really was 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 the story thing but but certainly reels uh uh that is that is a dead knockoff of of what they wanted to do and by all accounts those are fine copycats technically speaking but the the and and I could go into like you, you could do a th- on two two things. One is like Spiegel with with Snapchat. They started creating like those like the kind of the local sort of narrative sort of stories, and that was his idea of like, oh, if you live in you know Burbank, you're, you go to this college. Here's their story, and that was popular. But it was so intensive to create it because his solution was an old media model of like we'll have a bunch of people producing these things, and it was never going to scale. TikTok's algorithm algorithm make the tools easy for people to create stuff let the algorithm do, rely on the algorithm and their reliance on algorithms is fascinating and they are a scary company they really are a scary company because how widespread and their capabilities are you mentioned something before about like what wordle was great there was no sign in that was the beautiful thing about tiktok yep. yeah no f and sign it and, no and that just that reading that alone made me think like yeah how can i make apps because you're so used to the idea oh, like i'm like no like it can use local storage. I can use these other factors. I can have a thing where you go into it and use it. I can give you sign in to create, but I can make sure that nobody else can mess with what you do here by putting your browser. Things like that that other developers go, yeah, yeah, yeah. like no, like that's and if mm-hmm. if you get thirty percent drop off each way and you have that happen three times, you're left with nobody. Yeah. yeah. And there there are shades of that, right? Like there 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 are different levels. Like Wordle doesn't even have accounts. You couldn't do it if you wanted to. TikTok, you can use it once you download it, but then you want to do anything and they, they bug you to to sign up and make an account. Or like even even Substack, which we've talked highly of on this show. You go to someone's Substack page and it says, do you want to sign up for this thing? And they there's a button right there. It's big. It says, no, I just want to read it first. And then it goes away and you can just read it. And if you want to subscribe, you'll subscribe later. And I've ended up doing that of hey this is a interesting what do i like what their stuff is well i don't know yet but i go in and i look and i make that judgment myself and a Substack, which does have a little bit of a centralization by what email you sign up for everything um uh, there's there you 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 there you have a little hurdle because you want people to use the service but you let people walk by it and it's not it doesn't like end the world there's not a big gate that says you can't do anything without giving me a thing like there's a certain amount of uh, I don't know, just giving. It's just, it's just uh, I don't well, know. Well, yeah, it, it's, it's, you, some people create stuff and they forget they live in a world where competition exists and competition for attention. Yeah. And, and that's a frustrating thing I've encountered a lot and work and develop with other people. So I'm like, well, people want this, they're going to do it. I'm like, there's, there's some, yes, it's true. There's some things, if you have a thing and you're the only person that sells the widget and people need to buy widgets, like, yes, that is true. But when you live in a world, and you can think you think like, oh no, ours is really special. Like, no, you're not. And you, if you have that friction, also they may not even care about the problem anymore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, the innovation factory—that's my pick. Attention factory, gentlemen. Then after. Hey, there we go. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here for some weird things. And some yeah. Things. Uh, we're going to go offline, get ready for some cord killers in a couple of hours. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And uh, bye. 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 Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.